take it on Sparty. Michigan State won the toss. They elect to defer. So Harley and Couch will be back for the Canes. Manny Diaz, year number three. For Miami to live up to the season they are supposed to have, this is the one you have to have. And Katie George, year number six of college football for De'Ara King, the comeback from the torn right ACL. Yeah, Tess, he told me this week that we're at this place in college football where if you lose one game, it feels like the end of the world. But he and his teammates are not panicking. He says their goals are still very attainable if, if they win out, which he says they're capable of doing. But he has to play a whole lot better, and so does this offense. He said the focus this week was finishing drives and making the right decisions and reads in the red zone. They want to end up in the end zone, not settling for field goals like we saw a week ago. Boy, Katie, we heard that all week long. Just finish. Finish, finish. Let's see if that's what this offense can do here. King, first down, wrapped up, tackle for loss. Panashoop gets in there against De'Eric King. Not the start you want if you're Miami. Good job by Panashoop. Staying on the quarterback and dropping him on the misread RPO. So a loss of three. Defensive front of Michigan State has been solid the game of the season. And this is complete for a first down, and it goes to Will Mallory, the junior tight end from Jacksonville. A beautiful job settling in the zone by Mallory, and look at how De'Ara King throws him away from the middle linebacker. Halliday was underneath it. Quick to the near side. As he gets it to Rambo, Rambo the transfer from Oklahoma. He's one of these guys really out to prove what he once was. 2019, this guy was a star for the Sooners, transfers to the Canes. Yeah, excellent hands, and Miami offensive staff feels like if they're going to win this game, it's got to be on the perimeter with their wide receivers. They think they have an advantage there. Rambo's part of the reason why. Second and eight, just a push pass to Harley. But look at Michigan State, and Harley makes the most of it, but they pursued that right down the line. And that goes for five yards. It'll be third and three. Interesting matchup of coordinators. Scotty Hazleton's defense against Rhett Lashley's offense. There is Rhett. He says we're real close. Thinks that they've got a much better team, much better offense than they have shown. Third and three. King. Sprint right. And an easy pitch and catch to a wide open Mike Hur Harley for a first down. Excellent job and a great call by Rhett Lashley. Man coverage from Michigan State. You go with a little sprint right. Q9. The Q8 to the right. Nine to the left. Easy completion on the rub. Tempo now. King again. They pick up the pressure and a good strike to Rambo on the near side. So now this looks like the Miami offense that's finding its rhythm. They thought they were sitting on an early performance like this. But remember, the key word, finish. Have to finish. That's what they want to see out of this offense. Uh, this part of the field has not been a problem. Like Katie alluded to, this team has been 123rd in college football through two weeks in red zone efficiency. So they can move it between the 20s. What do they do when they get there? King. Fumbles the ball. Ball is still loose and on the ground. It is recovered by the Spartans. Looked like Quiveris Crouch was able to jump on it. There's a good decision by De'Ara King to get north and south, but how about the recovery there by Petrowski? Grabs that right arm. Wiggins, the wide receiver number eight, almost kind of falls asleep. He thinks that Restrepo's going to grab it. He doesn't. Wiggins is kind of standing around. A great hustle by Crouch to pounce on the football. Excellent job there by Michigan State's defense, jarring the football loose and then hustling over and beating Miami to the football. First plays on offense for Michigan State this year have been dynamic. Two games, two 75-yard touchdowns on their opening play. So what do you do for an encore? A swing pass to Reed. Well, it's not 75 yards and a touchdown, but it is a first down. Yeah, how about this? 
a gain of 74 that isn't a score is actually a bad start <laughs> for the Spartans. First play of the season, first play of Kenneth Walker's career at Michigan State. It goes to the house, and then, hey, why not? Follow it up the next week. A little trickery with a beautiful flea flicker to read over the top. It's been beautiful starts from Michigan State. A big reason why they have dominated each of their first two opponents. Peyton Thorne, sophomore quarterback, Kenneth Walker. He has been the spotlight so far, Katie. Yeah, guys, Ken Walker was very frank about why he transferred. He didn't feel like his strengths were being utilized in Wake Forest offense. He wanted to do more, so he entered the portal, and a mutual friend immediately put him in touch with O-line coach and run game coordinator Chris Kapilovic, who he really enjoyed. Then he spoke with OCJ Johnson. Through those conversations, he knew this was the kind of system he could excel in, and it would prepare him for that next level test. Uh, he has been outstanding early on. Thorne taken down. Wayne Monsteed, who's in for the injured starter, Keontre Smith, with the sack. This is a thing of beauty. How about this rush by the Miami Hurricanes? You see the outside defender rush underneath by the lineman, which frees up Steed, who makes the play on the quarterback. Just an excellent design and a great call by Manny Diaz, who doubles as the defensive coordinator. Great to see Steed back out there. He had a devastating knee injury. And missed the entire 2019 season. Now he gets the start today. Nothing happening as he joins in for another tackle with Harrison Hunt as well. So it'll be third and 17 for Michigan State. If you look at this Miami defense, they've been pretty good on first and second down. But where they've struggled has been on third down. Now third and 17, that's a pretty tall order. I think at this point, Michigan State, if I'm Miami, I'm thinking screens, draws, things like that. But they have got to do a better job moving forward on third down, particularly against Bama. They give up nine of the first 12 third down opportunities that Bama had. Third and 17 for Thorne. Does have time, but goes underneath, and well short of it is Trey Mosley. That was a great job by Miami's defense there. Sudden change after the De'Ara King fumble. You go out, you give up a quick first down. But then you rally and tighten the screws, force a negative play, and that's the M.O. for this Miami team. Got to force negative plays defensively and create explosive plays offensively. Bryce Berenger comes on the punt. Tyreek Stevenson back deep for Miami. <laughs> Berenger skies this inside the 10. That's a beauty all the way back to the one-yard line. What a punt by Berenger, and Stevenson fielded it at the one-yard line. A 56-yard punt for the Spartans. Flag is down back at the 42-yard line. During the return, holding number zero. They have the distance from the spot of the end of the kick. First and ten. Timeout. Fielding that ball all the way inside the five. They're going to start this from the... Because of the penalty, post-kick, they walk it off, and Miami will start from the one-yard line. And this is where you use a hard count. Hard count. See if you can't get those guys to jump off sides. And Harrison in the backfield with King. Ball set eye with Mallory. Pre-snap flag. Ball start. Offense. Number eight. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And that's why you do the hard count. Because even if you jump off sides, which is the worst possible scenario, right? Like your wide receiver that time falling forward before the ball is snapped, you only lose half a yard. Whereas if they jump, you get five. King from eight yards deep in his own end zone, and he throws a strike incomplete to the 10-yard line to Brinson, the freshman from Northwestern High School here in Miami. I know he had the fumble on the first drive, but I like the rhythm and the urgency that De'Eric King is showing already, getting the ball out of his hands, knowing that that Michigan State pass rush, it can get real on the edges. Harris beat the first man in the backfield, and then motors ahead for three yards and a first down. So the breathing room right away 
for Miami's offense. And that's the goal when you're backed up. You just want one first down because now, even if you have to punt it, your punter's not backed up against his own end line. So th this is already considered, as crazy as it sounds, a successful drive for the offense. Four-man rush against King. And they get to him. Flat comes down as he was taken down by Drew Beasley. And Jerry McGinn signaling holding against Miami. Holding. Offense. Number 62. Penalties decline. Second down. When you have a mobile quarterback like King, you have to be really diligent in your pass rush lane. So you're going to see one guy rush high, the other guy's going to rush low. That way, when De'Eric King feels that pressure over the top and he steps up, he's actually stepping up right into the defender who beats the left tackle inside. So that's a good job of staying disciplined in your rush lanes and a great job to have Beasley back on the field for the Spartans. Second 16 design quarterback run for King. You know, it's interesting we talked to Rep Lashley switch things up on the offensive line this week had to they just were not executing at a high level so they shake things up especially on the right side the Von Donaldson comes out Justice Olawashan moves from right tackle down to right guard and Jared Williams now filling in at right tackle third and 11. An offensive line coach said last week's performance against App State said really, really poor, and most of it was communication. So a new-looking right side of that line. Third and 11, let's see how they protect King. King with time, but he's going to check down. Harris squares up the shoulders, but he couldn't stay in. And the Canes will be punting away to the Spartans. Ronald Williams able to force Harris out. And that's okay. Like we said, when you're backed up on your own one-yard line, the goal is to make sure that your punter has enough room to execute his operation. 99-yard drive, of course, you'd love to have that, but it's highly unlikely if you play the stats. So this is still a decent drive for Miami, even though it's not the result they wanted. They have to quit having negative plays, though, and getting off schedule offensively. 28-year-old Lou Headley from Australia, who set the record for net punting last year, it was nearly 45 yards per punt net, will be kicking away to Jaden Reed. And this is a wobbler, a knuckler, and a fair catch made at the 37-yard line. Peyton Thorne, Kenneth Walker III, Reed, and that group will be back out there when we return to Hard Rock. $400 a month as a GA <laughs> he for is awesome. Coach Saban. I love it, man. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate every step. He's seen it, right? I mean, he has a good understanding of the foundation of how to build a program. Done a good job here so far this year. And only two weeks in, but, man, this team is way ahead of where I think most people thought they'd be. There's a reason for that. And that is what they've done with the transfers as Walker can't find much. So you think about how do you reshape a roster, Greg? You go to the transfer portal now, right? Instant eligibility to play. So 41 new players, 27 also left the program, and 20 of the 41 new players transfers. And I think that energy, that new energy, a lot of guys getting a new lease on life, new opportunity, a new fresh start, coupled with some of the veteran players they have, especially along the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. It's been a really good mix. Second and nine, and Thorne is sacked again. Chance Williams came crashing down on Peyton Thorne. And they have a good feel for the protections today. Manny Diaz dialing up another pressure that overloads that Michigan State protection. Two linebackers that need to be blocked by the running back. One, of course, has to be unblocked. Thorne's got to get that ball out of his hands, but an excellent rush and an ex excellent result for the Hurricanes. Such an athletic group up front for Miami. Third and 18. No play it conservative with Walker as he is chopped down. And again, that Miami defense able to get to Thorne. Remember the first drive for Michigan State? They recovered that fumble. It was just the five plays, 13 yards, and the punt. And now here, they'll be punting again. 
Michigan State not all that unlike Miami they can't have that negative play on second down that's two drives in a row that have been completely wiped out because of a second down sack so they got to find a way to get the ball out of Thorne's hands faster so that blitz can't get home Berenger had a great punt on his first kick of the day see if he can sky this as a high snap able to get it down and he drives it and Stevenson with the fair catch Harris trying to find something straight up the middle Simeon Barrow jogs off Sean Mallory comes in to play defensive tackle for the Spartans. You've got a lot of green grass right here. You can just throw it to your tight end. I mean, there's nobody in this part of the field. Just give it to him and see if he can a little bit of a little bit of space. Big Will Mallory. Second down run. Tackled right at the line of scrimmage is Harris. Let's go to Kevin in the studio. Says time now for our celebration moment brought to you by Allstate Morgantown Rock and Early Bird. Great job by the offensive line parting that Vitek defense like Moses parted the Red Sea. And when you give it to Lady Brown like that, he's Will Holler. 80 yards of the house, 14-0 West Virginia beating number 15 Virginia Tech. Back to you, Tess and Greg. I think it's an important game in terms of conference reputation. Virginia Tech off to such a good start. Had the big win against North Carolina up to number 15 in the country, 2-0. But trailing now by two scores to West Virginia. Meanwhile, Jalen Rivers, the starting left guard for Miami, is being attended to by medical staff. And he's a very imposing-looking left guard. And he has come here a few years ago as a top recruit and has delivered and we told you earlier they've made a change to the other side of the line so perhaps they switch things back and put Donaldson back in he had been the starter and has loads of experience was a freshman All-America back in 2017 and you hate that for Rivers young guy that was starting to come along it felt really good about the left side of that offensive line in large part due to Rivers his presence there at left guard. So this is potentially a huge loss for the Miami Hurricanes. The good news is you do have Novon Donaldson, who has played a lot of football that will sub in there at left guard. Had been the starting right guard, but they wanted to change things up after a poor performance overall by the offensive line a week ago. Third down and five after Rivers leads the game. Pressure look from Michigan State. No safeties deep. Their deepest defenders, six yards. King. Quick strike and it's incomplete. Surprised Harley couldn't hold on to it. A veteran guy who's reliable, who ranks eighth all time in career receptions with Miami. Yeah, and they decide to drop out, showed that pressure look. It was a good throw there by De'Ara King and one that Harley absolutely has to have. Drops have plagued this team for two years. Harley had a big drop last week as well, but man, you got to keep feeding them. That's your alpha dog at wide receiver. Keep feeding that young man. He's going to make a play for you at some point. Headley on to punt. Dangerous Jaden Reed back to return for Michigan State. And takes a Miami bounce, does it ever. Off the big leg of Lou Headley. Test Greg, extra yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Today, Miami is honoring Gilbert Frierson's favorite teacher, Miss Salazar of Francis Tucker Elementary School here in Coconut Grove. Gilbert, thank her for pushing him to be his best and always believing in him. That's wonderful. I think everybody has that one teacher in their life. It's a wonderful program to celebrate, honor, and support the teachers. Thorne been dealing with that front all day long and quickly gets it to Tyler Hunt, his tight end. That's going to be really important for Michigan State is to establish a little bit of misdirection right there. Bootleg and a good positive play on first and ten. And now a quick strike to go back to Hunt. And his helmet comes off so he will trot off the field. 
it's no secret who Miami is defensively. They want to bring pressure. So what you have to do as a quarterback, and Peyton Thorne's a young one, but is learning quickly, you got to figure out where are your answers within the route. Sometimes you have a hot route where a receiver will change what he's doing in an effort to get open faster. But if you don't have a hot route built into the play, you have to know where your answers are when that pressure comes. Thorne did a good job of it there. So after two quick throws to Hunt for 20 yards, they keep it on the ground with Walker, who is off to a tremendous start on the season, coming into this game averaging 10.7 yards per carry. He's been so fun to watch. That Wake Forest offense is unique. It's a little bit like triple option. You can never really hit the hole at full speed. You have to be reading constantly. Really unique offense, but maybe not the best fit for Kenneth Walker. I didn't realize he had the open field speed that he's put on tape the last couple weeks. He has been so impressive. You know, Wake Forest has that delayed style, that slow match. Yeah, I, I like the style. I really do, but it's hard on the running back, that's for sure. Thorne goes to the other side to Hayward, and Hayward, who was a running back and then transitioned to tight end, so when you get him in some open space and he gets the pads going forward and gets low, he can do some damage. Yeah, he's a big body and a good teammate, willing to change. He's an excellent young man. Has done a good job in the transition to more of an H-back role. Great hands, natural ball carrier. Too. So when he gets it in his hands, man, he's a load to bring down. But four down territory potentially here. I keep it on the ground. I pound it with my outstanding running back right along the left side of that offensive line. Walker, look at the hole he has. Kenneth Walker inside the 30, inside the 25, and Michigan State is in business. Stevenson finally tracked him down. Just a great job by the left side of this offensive line, just washing everything down, and Walker bending it all the way back, finding that cutback lane, and he finds a lot of green grass. Intercept! Wow, Stevenson! Right in his hands for an interception, and he can't believe it. Incomplete. Well, I guess Thorne took it seriously when we said, man, you got to get the ball out of your hands. Well, this time he throws it really early. His wide receiver, Naylor, doesn't see it. Stevenson does. Just can't finish it. Would have been a great catch by the corner. And Stevenson had that until he went to the ground. So second life for Thorne and Michigan State after that play. And they go with the reverse, and it's Mosley. And he is chopped down right away by Bolden. are up for a third and eight. Mel Tucker's offense, they got going with Thorne to his tight ends and then Walker the big run and now can they deliver here on third and eight? This is where Miami likes to bring exotic pressure. Let's watch the secondary. They'll bring it from anywhere. Keep an eye on these two linebackers. Thorne being chased. Thorne's going to talk, and he's going to strive for that line to gain. And Peyton Thorne can get those wheels going. That was a great job by Thorne. Keeping your eyes downfield, staying in a passing posture so those defenders can't close on you and knowing exactly how many you need to get to the first down. Just a that student section needs to get loud here if they want to stop this Michigan State offense that all of a sudden on this drive looks the part of a 2-0 team. They were 0-2 on third down before this drive, 2-2 two for two on this drive. Peyton Thorne just had a good run moments ago. First down from the 13 as the flag comes in and the finger pointing does. Ball start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. First down. And Jared Curie, he was the starting left tackle last year. Six year of college football, he's on the right side now. And you look across this offensive line, sixth year, fourth year, sixth year, fifth year, sixth year. It's a veteran group. Not like them to jump off sides. Walker able to get to the edge, and Walker gives a little too. 
Boy, he is off to a great start this year. You're seeing everything that he can do. As Mel Tucker says, strong, quickness, balance, change of direction, run through the, run through the smoke. Man, he's so much faster in person, too. I mean, you watch him, you know he's got first. Man. Here's the fade. Incomplete as he was trying to get it to Speedy Naylor. Walker has been just so much fun to watch. And then the play action passing game. Once he gets going, that jump starts their whole offense. And you start working some of the misdirections. You work some of the bootlegs. He's looking much more like himself here in their third possession. Eleventh play of the drive coming up. Third and five. Shallow cross routes right here against Miami's man coverage. Miami is going to use a timeout. Andy Diaz, who is also the defensive coordinator, will talk things over with his group. They're facing a third and five when we return to Hard Rock. Eight. After the timeout called by Manny Diaz to gather his defense. Warren looks over. Third and five. Walker straight ahead, just two yards on third down. Interesting play call there from offensive coordinator Jay Johnson. Just conservative. Miami kind of getting in what looked like it was going to be kind of a drop mode, but the front line, man, did a great job holding the point of attack, getting the stop against the excellent running back. Good stop there from the Miami defense, but a really nice drive from Michigan State. It hadn't had much going in their first few possessions. Matt Coughlin has been the starting kicker for five years. This is short attempt. Hot snap is put down and it goes through. Twenty three yarder for Coglin. This season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, all state will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. With Michigan State to go 2-0 on the season, they've had big leads early on. They've started games with first place 75-yard touchdowns. Now we have a defensive first quarter and then a long drive that only results in three. Three-nothing Spartans. It was a really good adjustment, though, by their offense on the last possession. Quick passes, getting the ball out of Peyton Thorne's hands quickly, and then also utilizing some of that misdirection because we know this is a very athletic Miami defense that wants to flow quickly and be aggressive. So what you got to do, you got to take advantage of that aggressiveness. Give them some misdirection. Give them some things to think about. Michigan State did a lovely job of that last time around. Katie? Guys, rehabbing a knee is always a difficult process. It's easy to get down or discouraged to let setbacks consume you, but Derek King never let that happen. He said he watched his mother, Cassandra, battle and beat breast cancer, which is way worse than anything he's had to go through. She never had a bad day. She controlled what she could control, which was her attitude and mindset. She always remained positive. That perspective helped him through eight months of rehab to ensure he was ready to play by week one. He says his mom is the strongest person he knows. Guess what? Cassandra says the same thing about him. Adversity forges young people, and he's been through a lot of it. King now on first down, and he gets this complete to Rambo. And Katie, not just what he went through in watching his mom, but that difficult stretch. He transfers to Miami, Katie, and then he loses his father unexpectedly. A heart attack took his life. Yeah, it was extremely emotional for him. Luckily, COVID-19 played a good part because he was able to go back to Houston for a couple months and be there with his mother, be there with his brother. And so he said he took that time to really emotionally support 
those two individuals in his life. But yes, that heart attack was unexpected, caught the entire family and Houston community by surprise. This is an unbelievably resilient young man. He has dealt with his fair share of adversity that most individuals would never have to go through. And now he's finding a rhythm, and here goes Rambo. I love Derek King. I, I, there are very few players that you really do fall in love with. He's one of them for me. I've been around him since he was back at Houston playing wide receiver when yeah. Greg Ward was the quarterback. And I remember that staff telling me this young man, Derek King, he's different, guys. He's different. We all know his story. He started in high school ahead of Kyle Trask and went on to Houston, played receiver, whatever it takes to help the team, transfers here to Miami and has been a breath of fresh air in revitalizing an offense that had been stagnant for quite some time. So after the 21-yard catch by Rambo, now Harris on the side. You brought up the fact that he played receiver. I mean, this is a guy who is responsible for over 10,000 yards in his college career. The passing yards, the rushing yards, but Greg, 520 receiving yards. The guy's got kick return yards, punt return yards, you name it. <laughs> He's just a great football player. And what I've been impressed with is just how accurate he's become. I mean, at first, early in his career, a little erratic, great athlete, and he's just gotten more and more polished as he's moved along. And has really done a beautiful job in Rhett Lashley's offense. And looking for something. Able to extend. And able to get to the corner and tiptoe. A surgically repaired right knee, but all that rehab, you see that explosiveness. Yeah, and that's a play right there that just not that many quarterbacks can make, man. It feels like the pocket's collapsing around you. He somehow finds a way to escape, and not just escape, but create positive yards as a result of it. That was a nice job there by De'Ara King. He's with a third and seven. Possible four down territory here, too. So you can run it if the box defensively looks like you can take advantage of it and it looks like here you might be able to No, they move him back down inside this would be a pass look for the hurricanes third and seven for king and rambo shakes free again charleston rambo and miami's in business first down canes that's just stealing right there i mean if you're michigan state you can't play press bail your corner is sitting out there on third and seven plus, and he's taking off, scared to get beat deep. Get beat deep. Well, he just gave up the free completion and didn't do a good job either of coming up and making a tackle. They have got to be more aggressive on the perimeter. Miami will throw pitches all day long. And off of that stack release, Rambo is able to get another catch. So they stack Restrepo and Rambo, and in doing so, they get the quick throw to the outside. Nine more yards for the Canes. Yeah, make Miami, if I'm Michigan State, I'm making Miami throw it over my head on the next series because these hitches underneath are not going to fly. But if I'm Miami, man, I'm just pounding it right now. Big running back between the tackles. King, quarterback run, near side. Can he find something? No, he is wrapped up. Good job down the line by Michigan State. That was Chester Kimbrough with the tackle and Snow coming in as well. You see King get up and was, didn't look real comfortable there as he's kind of limping a little bit, maybe favoring that right leg. And of course, that's the leg that was surgically repaired. So keep an eye on him. If you're the offensive coordinator, Brett Lashley, you got to take that into account. And don't open your quarterback up to potential risk, knowing he might not be at 100% on this snap. Ninth play of the drive. Tempo has worked. And now they give a little window dressing and flex out the tight ends on third and two. Sprint right, looking to the end zone. King goes to the back of the end zone, but overthrows the intended target. He was looking for the freshman from Texas, Arroyo. Oh, man. Offense staying on the field for Miami. But the way Michigan State's played up front, you almost got to think that they're thinking throw here. The King doesn't look like he's super mobile with how he's moving, favoring that right leg. Remember when Rhett Lashley said, we must finish drives. He's going for it on fourth and two, Diaz and Lashley. King going to test the other side to the end zone. He goes, oh, was that easy. Rambo was just standing there like a tin man with his heels at the back of the end zone and said, thank you very much. Touchdown, King.
Just beautiful patience by De'Eric King. This is the same play, a little sprint right option. You want to hit that guy in the front right of the end zone, but Michigan State does a good job of taking that guy away. Too much flow to the right. King gets patient, finds his receiver in the back of the end zone, and a good job, too, by Rambo staying put. And I bet that ball for Rambo felt like it was in the air for about 60 yards. <laughs> he was about as open as you get. Rambo had five catches for 70 yards and that fourth down touchdown on that drive alone. All week long, you heard everybody involved in this offense. As Horagalis caps the extra point, saying, we feel like we're real close, real close so on that drive. They looked it like they're there. King third with tempo, right? I mean, when you're tempoing, man, your quarterback's you. And a read on the return from his goal line. Taken down at the 20. Flag is down at the 16. Like we'll have a holding call here. It looked like it looked like number 81 for Michigan State just kind of tackled a hurricane as he was running down the field. During the return, holding, return team number 81, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Michigan State. We just mentioned Nick Marshall at Auburn back in Rhett Lashley's pass. Speaking of Auburn, what a game tonight! Saturday night football presented by Capital One, the annual whiteout game in Happy Valley. Number 22, number 10. Auburn Penn State tonight at 730. What is Bo Nix in store for in that setting? Uh, buckle up man. It's it's going to be awesome. We know that Bo has not played as well away from Jordan Hare as he does in the friendly confines on the plane. So it's going to be huge for him to keep his cool stay in the moment and lean on that potent rushing attack quickly to the outside. Mosley gets free. Trey Mosley's going to turn it on and finally be chased down. Late flag on the field. Great explosive play by Trey Mosley. Yeah, just easy as can be. A little bubble to the field and bad tackling by the Hurricanes on the perimeter. How about Mosley, though, showcasing that speed. Almost gets behind Williams, and he has to drag him down from his horse collar. That's the six foot five freshman James Williams. First one a foul. Force collar tackle. Number zero on the defense. 15 yard penalty be added on the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Trey Mosley, 51 yards and tack on something extra. So perfect scenario for Michigan State to respond after that great looking Miami drive. Really Already great. inside the 25. Beautiful response there on the first play. And that's some of the difference that you see from Michigan State this year. A lot more explosiveness amongst their skill position players. Simmons. Not much there. Keeps a leg drive going for two yards. Jordan Simmons, who had a good game last week against an overmatched Youngstown State team, went for 121 yards. Check down will be third and eight. Good lose there by Thorne. Sometimes the best options to throw away. A big play here from Miami's defensive front. Usually this down in distance, Manny Diaz will bring the house. And here in the red zone, space is condensed. Still have a young quarterback. I'm dropping into coverage. See if he can find a hole or a void in the zone. Aiden Reese to the bottom of your screen. Speedy Naylor to the top on third and eight. Bottom of the receivers at the bottom don't know the play. They keep looking back at their quarterback. Thorns directing traffic. Goes across the grain, which is always dangerous. He was looking for Speedy Naylor, and that ball finally went to the turf. Jay Silvera was tracking down Thorne. Like the bottom there, two receivers to the bottom. They didn't know what was going on. They're looking over there. What's the play? Hey, give me the play. Wow. And then as soon as Thorne breaks the pocket, he's trying to direct traffic. I think they weren't on the same page. He was expecting something. They didn't have the call. 
Just a miscommunication there by the Spartans offense. Hoglin a 39 yard attempt. And that leaks to the right. So they open with a bang on that series, the Mosley 51 yard play, but it ends up being a dud. They come away with no points. Manny Diaz says that's the way we like it down here. 7 3 Canes. On this Michigan State sideline, it feels like 110. There is not an ounce of shade. I've seen defensive players using an oxygen tank in between series. Peyton Thorne continues to dip his towel in ice water, putting it around his neck. These guys are hot on this sideline. Something we will continue to monitor conditions down at field level. Well, isn't it Mike nice? Hartley with the catch. Isn't it nice to be the home team? Let's, let's take a peek at the at the Miami sideline. It's, it's the perfect amount of shade right over as Michigan State is baking on the far side. King went 14 yards to Harley. Now he wants more than that and going up and getting it is Harley again. The leader of the receivers who came back for this year said he wanted to set the tone and he is. King. He is in rhythm now. The Eric King goes to the other side to Wiggins. How about the fearlessness of Harley here? Knowing that there's a safety coming that might just clean him out. And my goodness, going up making a great play. Harris, he cuts back, and that'll be another first down for Miami. I like the tempo that Miami's starting to put forth. You know that Michigan State team is feeling the heat literally and figuratively right now Miami in a really nice rhythm offensively. Scotty Hazleton defensive coordinator for the Spartans going up against Rhett Lashley a guy who is often talked about as one of those hot names could be a head coach candidate soon enough. We'll see how this offense continues to perform this year. Yeah, no doubt about it. But I hate this if I'm Miami, man. I mean, the officials, they stop it, have a long conversation, just destroys the rhythm that you have offensively. I mean, you're moving, chains are moving, second and one, you just pick up the first down. And then the officials take the air out of the place so hard on the offense. Legal substitution, defense, more than 11 players on the field, five yard penalty. First down. Now, I understand that they got it right, but the result is a five yard gain. If I'm Miami, I don't care about the 12 right. players on the field. Just let me continue with the tempo. I don't care. We're moving, we're shaking. Okay, we gain four as opposed to five. So be it, right? The offense will take it. What I'd prefer if I'm the offense is to keep the pedal down. I know the officials have to get it right. I understand that, but as an offensive player, that used to drive me absolutely crazy when the officials would stop the play when it doesn't really have that much of an effect on the outcome of the previous play. I'm off my I'm off my soapbox. Oh no, you stay right there, my man. <laughs> I've done this you a couple times. You swing that bat of opinion all you want. Yeah, Bash me over the head with it, as far as I'm concerned. And now we're going to get another official's timeout. And this just stalls the drive. Just absolutely stalls the drive. And Manny Diaz, obviously very frustrated. They are up tempo. That's what they want to be, John Perry. The officials are getting in the way of it. The game clock is correct. First down, Miami. And let's you know, bring in our rules expert, John Perry. John, your take on that, what Greg just put forth. Well, number one, I can remember getting yelled at by Greg McElroy for this, <laughs> so I get it. Uh, you know what? Do the simple things extraordinarily well. When you slow the game down, the pace down for something simple like this, it's not what any of us want. First down, King to the end zone. He goes. And the flag will come out at the end of that play as Kimbrough had coverage on Keyshawn Smith. Now, if you're an offensive player, you're okay uh, stopping it for a defensive pass interference. That's an example where you might be okay with the stopping. Pass interference, defense, number 12. Automatic, 
first down. You see Miami taking advantage now. I think Michigan State defensively they said, man, we're not giving up these hitches underneath anymore. So if Miami's going to beat us, they're going to have to throw it over their head. So right there, that was a nice job of Derek King dropping it in the bucket. And almost had the catch, if not for the interference. First and goal, Canes. Harris out of the backfield, well defended. That was well played by Darius Snow. It's really nice from Snow, man. And I've been so impressed watching this Michigan State defense all week. They're very strong up front, which should come as no surprise. The second level defenders and linebackers are very active, but what I really like are those safeties, man. They're instinctive. They diagnose and they close. And when they close, you're not breaking free. Very few missed tackles through two games of the season for Scotty Hazleton's defense. Also three, second and goal from the 11. Should have been caught for a touchdown by Mallory. What a disappointing play for Miami's offense. Just a perfectly thrown ball. Throw it away from the defender. You hit him right on the left peck. And that's one that Mallory absolutely has to have. King drove it right into his chest. But instead, they're facing a third and goal. Third down, scrambling. Flag is down. May have holding on the right side of that line as he was met by Xavier Henderson. Holding. Offense. Number 70. 10 yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage. Third down. Remember, new look on the right side of that line. Ola Lashon comes over the right guard. Williams starting at right tackle. Rivers, the left guard, was injured earlier, and they brought Donaldson, who had been the starting right guard in at left guard. I'm a little surprised they, they took the penalty. Agreed. I mean, they're well within field goal range. And yet, they were off the field. Highly unlikely that Miami's going to go for it on fourth and goal from the five or six. I'm really surprised. Now you can just throw it at the end zone. Maybe you get a jump ball. Maybe you get another pass interference. Third and goal. He's going to check down to Harris. And Harris will be swarmed, and another penalty comes in. All of a sudden, this thing is getting choppy with all the yellow flags on the grass. Third year for Manny Diaz with the Canes. And you have to wonder, I, I'm not going to harp on it, you have to wonder if the outcome of this drive would be a little different if not for that time that was taken Holding. on the 12 man. Offense, number five. Penalties decline, fourth down. We talk about rhythm. You speak with Rhett Lashley, who you see there, the offensive coordinator, rhythm, pace, all of a sudden was taken away with the officials communicating. Either way, penalty declined, and a good stop there by the Michigan State defense when they were on their heels. For Gallus, the freshman kicker, comes on for the 27-yard attempt. Made the go-ahead 43-yarder last week with two minutes remaining against App State. And he cannot connect here. Put it to the left of the upright. Mel Tucker says, oh, yeah. Greg McElroy, Katie George with you in a 7-3 Miami lead. And Diaz, head coach of the Kings, 
as Peyton Thorne takes a shot downfield to no one. We had an interesting discussion with Manny Diaz the other day because, listen, you look at their schedule and obviously you're circling week one because you're playing Alabama. And then you go out and what happens to you happens to everybody that plays against Alabama. You lose by a wide margin and then you have to be resilient and come back and win against App State. He said, I don't think I realize how much of an emotional toll it is on our players coming off the Alabama game. Yeah, and it's hard. And you got to play a team like App State that's always ready to rock and roll. That was a tough game last week and they showed some heart by finishing the way they did. Walker on second and ten. Walker gets to the edge. This kid has shown something since transferring over from Wake Forest. I'm really impressed. But Kenneth Walker had been all year. He has been absolutely outstanding. And I feel like the Miami players, man, everybody that's playing on is like, man, this guy's faster than I realized. The angles that people take against him just aren't great. He always seems to capture the edge, man. He has surprising top-end speed and really nice acceleration. But, man, the biggest thing from him is his feel and his vision and patience as he attacks the hole. And then check down to Kenneth Walker. And Walker makes the most of that for a few yards. You know, Michigan State last year, Greg, they didn't have a rushing touchdown by a running back last year. They had a tight end. They had a quarterback. They had two. Kenneth Walker comes out and right away. He's got five rushing touchdowns in two games. Yeah, how about the first play right. from offensive scrimmage of the 2021 season? It's a touchdown rushing to a running back. So it's a, it's a big difference, of course, this year versus last year. You almost rip off the rearview mirror if you're Mel Tucker and his staff. Man, they are a completely different team this year with athleticism and good leadership on both lines of scrimmage. So Jay Johnson, offensive coordinator, up in the booth. And play calling's easy when you can give it to this guy. Kenneth Walker does it again on second and six, moves the chains. Bolden finally tracked him down. 25 yards on that run for Walker. And once again, I mean, just how about the cutback by Walker? I mean, it's a thing of beauty. You look at the Miami players that are rushing inside and nobody's home on the outside. Walker finds that space. It's just been so fun to watch this young man work throughout the course of this season, man. Continuing to do it here today against a pretty decent running defense for the Hurricanes. So again, and Walker, look at the balance, look at the leg drive as he works it to the 34-yard line. Really nice drive right here. The last couple drives for Michigan State just starting to really lean on that Miami offensive front, allow that offensive line that does an excellent job getting a surge, playing well together. A lot of veterans up there. Allow those guys to control the flow of the game. Second and five. Quickly getting it to Naylor. Speedy Naylor named perfectly, isn't he? To the outside and a burst. Hitchens had to run him down. But Speedy Naylor now has Michigan State in prime position. 27 yards there. First and goal, Sparty. Thorne to the other side. To the end zone. Incomplete. Read the intended target. And Reed looks like he is in pain. Playing just beyond the goal line. And he has been dynamic off to an amazing start this season. Good to see him up on his feet. And hopefully he's okay. He just landed really hard as his back hits the turf. Almost had it. You see that head snap back and hit. Hopefully he's okay. And you see that right leg too kind of just hit down a little awkwardly for Reed as Stevenson was on Kind of stepped on him awkwardly. Yeah, that knee of Stevenson may have come into the right rib cage. Jaden Reed, so he walks off with the trainers. Last week he had 181 yards and two touchdowns. Eighth play of this drive coming. Speedy Naylor had the big play to put them in position. Second and goal. Bunch to the right side. 
Simmons the running back and Simmons struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage as they were waiting on him. And if you're Michigan State man all the room for you has been on the edges right now Miami has not done a good job of containing Walker especially as he gets outside the tackle man so if you're going to try to run it here and you got to get it outside the tackle and if you're not look in the direction of Speedy Naylor got a one on one situation up top and against pressure he might be the answer. He's matched up with pouch third and goal. Walker to the end zone. Kenneth Walker do it all. He did it all. Every which way. Running the ball and now a six yard touchdown catch. Just a great job by Walker jumping leverage to the flat breaking a tackle and finding pay dirt. Just an unbelievable job there as Corey Flagg had an opportunity to bring him down to the field of play, but Walker just too much. Ten seven Michigan State lead. We'll be back in ten seconds. Now a look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. Kenneth Walker, one man show at times. Just had a touchdown catch. 101 yards in total offense. Really nice drive there from Michigan State. Walker was outstanding. But Miami's going to have to make some adjustments defensively because right now they are not containing the football. Every opportunity Michigan State had that drive to get outside, they got outside, and there was no hurricane defender there. So just a great job of taking advantage of Miami's inability to keep the ball inside. Wonderful drive from Michigan State's offense. Now there was a phrase that we used before we kicked off today, and then you see how this Michigan State team goes about it. You realize how much they've been able to reshape the roster with guys like Kenneth Walker. That is a program that's ahead of schedule. Come down here to Miami with an offense that feels like they are finding their rhythm on a day like today. And they got a 10 7 lead. And we got halftime coming up soon enough. Let's check in with the guys. State Farm halftime report coming your way. Ke Kevin Nagani alongside Booger McFarland. Uh, so we've got a couple teams, uh, top 25 upset alert. Yeah, Cincinnati is giving, getting all they can handle from Indiana and Nebraska Cornhawks. When did the black shirt show up? Oh, my goodness. They are making sure Oklahoma is going to have to fight for that game. And Cincinnati, we're going to have highlights coming your way. Also, preview Auburn versus Penn State and Alabama and Florida. Back to you. Guys, I'm looking forward to catching up on that Indiana-Cincinnati game. I know Michael Penix Jr. has a couple touchdown passes, and Ritter is yet to get going through an interception, trailing by two scores. Reverse. And getting to the edge. They're going to get a 15-yard penalty here on Miami on the crackback block. As you see right there, man. Huge block from Corey Gaynor, the center. Personal foul. Offense, illegal blindside block. Half the distance to the goal remains first down. Center gainer. It's very clear. Well, I'm not sure what the fans are booing about. That's about as typical a blindside block as you're ever going to see. So the question some might be asking blindside block Saturdays versus Sundays here that 
player could not defend himself. He has blindly hit it. It's a correct call. Eric King trying to get to the edge of a seal block, and he struggles just to get a yard and a half as Dow was tracking him down from that defensive back position. And Miami just can't seem to get out of their own way. I mean, making mistakes, penalties, catching the ball inside the five yard line on a punt return. And they have made a bunch of errors and yet still within striking distance. So got to collect themselves and quit making those mistakes on offense and on defense. Second and 21. King with time muscles it to the 30 yard line and is able to find Charleston Rambo who has been his favorite target so far in this first half 17 yards there eighth catch on eight targets for Rambo really nice catch really nice design against the soft zone coverage from Michigan State make this third down and manageable. The officials are having a conversation again, man. I mean, this has been over and over again, these officials. Operator, please put 155, 155 on the game clock. Thank you. And it comes as a cost of Miami's identity as an offense, to your point. They want pace, they want tempo. Third and four. And rush came easy completion again to Rambo. What a first half Charleston Rambo is having over yeah. 100 yards, nine catches, another first down. And these corners have got to make some adjustments in the second half because right now they're just giving these hitches to the field away over and over and over again. Now that's an easy throw for the quarterback, and Rambo's going to rack up a bunch of targets if they keep playing that defensive look. King on first down. King wants more than just the hitch, but it is picked off. Sensational stop by Sparty. Interception by Angelo Gross. Flag is down. We'll check on that as the Miami offense trots off the field. Ruin on the field is an interception. First and ten for Michigan State. Sideline warning. First of the game for Michigan State. First down. And this is just rock and roll of the safeties right here. De'Eric King's a veteran guy. He's got to see that because it's clear as day what those safeties are looking at. I mean, they're watching De'Eric King's eyes. His eyes are to the right the entire time. The free safety can just fly right out underneath it. That is stealing because it also is in the air far too long. If you're trying to throw a seam route, it's got to be between 18 and 22 yards. That time, more like 25 to 28 yards, that free safety is going to be all over it immediately. That was a gimme there for the Michigan State defense and a bad play there by the veteran quarterback. Second Miami turnover. Thorne setting up the screen, does so to Hayward, and Connor Hayward now is rumbling towards midfield. Three timeouts to work with for Michigan State. Three-point lead, clock counting down to a minute 15. Back under center, Thorne with time, lost it downfield. The receiver went down just inside the 40-yard line. That was Speedy Naylor. Thorn, you got to be really smart here. You can, of course, go into halftime with a nice lead. Would love to have an opportunity to give Coglin a chance to kick a field goal, steal some points here before the half. But don't take any unnecessary risks with the football, especially over the middle of the defense. A man crashing into the face of Peyton Thorne, and a flag comes in. And the pressure coming off the edge. I think it was DeAndre Johnson who got his arm wrapped around the neck of Peyton Thorne.
Personal foul. Rough in the passer. Defense. Number eight. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Another costly mistake. And all of a sudden, that ball is marching deeper into Miami territory. And it's coming off the left side. It's a good rush by DeAndre Johnson, but can't really see. Does he throw him down late? Yeah, it looks like he does. He it's close. I don't know if I love the call, but I've got to protect the quarterback. I understand that. Also, too, it kind of attacked the head or neck area of the quarterback who's a defenseless player. So you've got to be a little careful there if you're deep at the bend. Some dumb penalties for Miami throughout the course of the first half. Six penalties for 53 yards. Walker tackled for a loss. Steed again who gets the start. Probably do so for the next month. With Keontre Smith out. Week two Monday Night Football. We'll have the Packers and the Lions. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Monday Night Countdown, of course, starts at 6. And over at ESPN 2, with Peyton and Eli are getting great reviews with what they're doing with the alternate broadcast. You can see them at 8 p.m. on ESPN 2 for the Monday Night matchup between the Lions and the Packers. season we talked about Miami and North Carolina who's the second best team in the AC right. who is a lot of people say you know I love the Canes yeah I love what they got up front defensively I love the veteran leadership and explosive plays with the Eric King and now all of a sudden you know what happens with Alabama you struggle with the pass App State and here's this pesky Michigan State team that believes so much in who they are and what they are 2 and 0 and they're looking for more before halftime a tightly played game. Second 15. That is incomplete. Thorne was trying to drive it to Terry Lockett. It'll be third down. 54 seconds remaining in two timeouts for Michigan State. And based on the roster, I mean, Miami's roster is the second best roster in the ACC. Yes. And they have talented players that will play on Sundays. A lot of guys that will be wealthy guys playing the sport, man. But they will make way too many mistakes. They don't leverage the football. They've got to make some adjustments in the second half. Or else the disciplined Michigan State team has a chance to run them out of the gym. Remember, Manny Diaz calls his own defense. Michigan State, second, third down here, third and 15. They're two of seven on third downs. Thor just gobbled up and driven back. Corey Flat coming straight in that middle linebacker and taking down Thorne. Yet another flag is down. Sideline warning. Miami. Their first of the game. Timeout. Miami. It's just a great job by Flag. His eyes are in the backfield the whole time. You're going to see him. This is called a green dog, which means as soon as no one's blocking him, he's got the green light. Go ahead. That's. You see Thorne step up. Flag recognizes that and closes quickly. That's a great job by the linebacker. Well, Tess, this is right up your alley. Corey Flag Jr. wanted to drop weight and improve his stamina this offseason, so he took up boxing, working with a local trainer, and fell in love with it. Now, he did say the first week was absolutely brutal because he didn't realize that it was such a total body workout. But after a few months, he met his weighted goal of 230 pounds, which translated to on-field speed, which we just saw. And I had to ask him, guys, what his favorite move was. He said, no doubt, it's the hook, but he is fond of the uppercut as well, Tess. And he showed an uppercut <laughs> knockout punch there. We got to get my man to the Fifth Street Gym where the great Muhammad Ali was training just a few blocks away back in the day. Younger, going to try to pin inside the 10 as it leaks into the end zone. And Corey Flagg came up with a big play there. A sack on Thorne. Third Miami sack today. And so far, Miami's done a decent job of getting into a rhythm offensively, but some of the same issues have plagued them. They haven't been able to finish. They've had far too many drop passes. They probably had three or four drops already today. So there have been opportunities, and they got to feel decent. They did not play well. 
here in the first half of this football game and yet they're only down three against a very good football team so you almost if you're Miami while you're mad you're also looking at it thinking you know what man can't play much worse than that and yet we're within striking distance and if you're Michigan State man much of the same keep feeding Kenneth Walker keep mixing run pass and being balanced and you're going to be all right throughout the rest of this game Harris first down run and it's a good one as he goes after 10 plus yards that leaves 32 seconds Miami two timeouts remaining listen not to get lost with the choppy play the sloppy play the self-inflicted wounds of penalties and turnovers but De'Aaron King 20 of 24 for 210 yards in this first half it's about rhythm it's about that consistent pace and the offense getting in a rhythm being patient too that last interception that was just impatient trying to make a play when it wasn't there to be made incomplete rainbow tried his best to go up high and stay in and Beasley was coming in on King off the edge six year of college football for De'Ara King a long path to transfer from Houston after that sensational career there and last year the COVID year with the Canes and now the comeback year off the torn right ACL. Second and 10, complete. Smith, and he gets it to the 49 yard line. Remember, two timeouts remain for Miami. Clock stops moving the chains. Go up there and spike it if you're De'Ara King. And that's what he will do. He will clock it. And right now it says 17 seconds. This is an opportunity here. Miami still with a timeout in their hip pocket. You can work the middle of the field if you so choose. And if you have an opportunity in one-on-one, -on -one, man, take a shot downfield. Those safeties get a little tight. See if they can give Borgalis a chance, the freshman kicker. reception by Rambo and clock counts down and a timeout has to be used and Charleston Rambo with another eight yards he has 10 catches and 117 yards and had that touchdown on fourth down earlier yeah he's been excellent but they have really given him an awful lot I yeah. mean just playing very soft coverage Giving him a lot of easy completions underneath. Here's a hitch. Really nice here after the catch. They did this a couple times. As soon as he catches it, first miss, makes a guy miss. And he's out the gate. And this one, just staying put in the back of the end zone. Rambo's been really good here in the first half of this football game when others have made some drops. You've seen Mallory drop one. You saw Mike Harley drop one. He's been sure-handed. The transfer from Oklahoma and has clearly been a big reason why Miami's been able to put together a couple of nice offensive drives. Just got to learn how to finish here in the second half of this football game. No timeouts remain for Miami. Nine seconds on the clock. King incomplete. Trying to get it to Harley. That's aggressive there with no timeouts left. Catch it. He gets tackled. The clock stops for the chains to move. But for you to get everyone lined up and spike it with just five seconds left, that's cutting it a little close. So if you're going to work it, I suggest working it to the boundary up top. Throw a quick out route, five yards or so. Make your field goal kicker just a little bit better. Michigan State's going to use a timeout. UFC Fight Night is coming to you from the Apex in Vegas as Smith takes on Spawn in a middleweight event. Prelims will get going on ESPN Plus at 4 Eastern. And of course, also tonight, you got Auburn and State. This gets us started here. Michigan State and Miami. 
Looking forward to a great day ahead. I mean, that, that whiteout up in Penn State. Well, we're gonna <laughs> it's going to be rocking. Seats. And I hear some of the guys, and Chris Fowler, St. Louis, I think it's one of the best settings in all sports. I had the chance to call one of them four overtimes. Michigan, Penn State. Yeah. It is unlike anything else in the sport. I've never been there. <laughs> I've never been there. It's a bucket list. Well, one you've been me. in the Iron Bowl. They're, you know they're in about. Iowa are bucket list for me, but it's going to be awesome tonight. I can't wait to watch it. Last chance in the first half. And incomplete. Rambo was the target there. He had 117 yards and a touchdown. But this Michigan State team, they play like a team. He took advantage of some opportunities and some Miami mistakes. And they will get the ball to start the second half. Well, Greg, I think you're a marvelous analyst, but Whoa. you could make a good coach <laughs> if you wanted. I just spoke with Manny Diaz, and he echoed the same sentiments. He said, look, we dropped a touchdown pass. We missed a field goal. It's been the story of the red zone. Both teams have actually struggled inside the 20. We have to go out here and get our offense going. I asked him, well, how do you do that? He said, easy, throwing and catching the football. Rambo has had an excellent first half. He said, we need other guys to step up and help out. And Katie, right now, he needs his defense to do something early on. He has, of course, calls the defense, and his Michigan State will start off with the ball. And then there is Kenneth Walker the third, who has just been dynamic as the transfer running back. Yeah, we knew he was good. I, I got to be honest, I didn't know he was this good. I mean, in person, he is so fast. He is so strong. And he almost never goes down upon initial contact. Has great feel. Great on the cutback lanes. He's been a star today, not just on the ground, but through the air as well, as you see him cash in there for the touchdown. Kenneth Walker has been as advertised, and if Miami doesn't do a better job in the second half tackling him, they're going to be in for a long day with what that running back's capable of. He will get the work to start off this second half, and he's got another big play as he's weaving throughout that Miami defense. 19 yards for Walker. And how about the cutback again? As you see the defender there for Miami, Mari Carter, overplaying it. And then there in the third level, there's nobody home for Miami as he just dances his way to a beautiful first down run. I mean, Kenneth Walker has done it all today. Just outstanding. He's over 100 yards rushing on the first play of the second half. Walker trying to bounce this just back to the line of scrimmage after he had that great start to the season week one against Northwestern that goes for 264 yards and four touchdowns Mel Tucker said he comes in and he thanks the head coach for taking a chance on him he says coach thank you so much for taking a chance on him he said, are you kidding me thank you for taking a chance on us <laughs> taking a chance on me what right. thank you absolutely I mean, these guys, man, and he, he reminds me of some of the great backs that Michigan State's had over the years, man. He might be the next one in line. Saw the offensive coordinator, Jay Johnson, who says, what do you say we work, Kenneth Walker? The transfers, the big story when it comes to Michigan State. And it's unbelievable. I mean, they've just completely turned everything over. Kenneth Walker, the aforementioned Kenneth Walker, what he's already added to the rush game. And you had Horst, who's locked down that left tackle spot. Of course, quarterback's best friend is on the blind side. And then Jaden Reed, the transfer from Western Michigan, has been huge the last couple weeks. Third and nine, and that is incomplete as he was looking for Jaden Reed. But Al Blades had coverage on Reed. So the Miami defense does their job on third down. Good job there by Miami's defense. Obviously not so good on the first play of the second half. Give Kenneth Walker a big old rushing lane to go through. A good job clamping down there around midfield and bringing some more pressure on Peyton Thorne. They're under fourth punt today. come in pre-snap. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. 
And tough to broadcast a Michigan State game when you think of a punter without thinking about the great legacy of Mike Sadler, who was the uh, first four-time academic All-American at Michigan State, who tragically was lost in a car accident, but one of the all-time greats to ever play for the Spartans, All-America, and Rose Bowl, and great fake punts through the years, and true All-American on the field as well, and Berenger continues on that legacy of punting. And does a good job inside the 10 with it. That's the way Sadler would have done it. All the way to the five. 55 yard punt for the Spartans. And officials are back at midfield. Legal formation on the kicking team. The five yard penalty would be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. They might re-kick here, actually. It looks like Manny Diaz is trying to get the officials' attention because they don't want to be backed up inside the five. Reminder, we got Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One, and it is going to be a scene now. It is the whiteout between number 22 Auburn and number 10 Penn State. Tonight at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. I mean, seeing Auburn from the deep south, the SEC, the grand traditions, playing on the road against a Big Ten opponent. They played Wisconsin at Wisconsin all the way back in 1931. <laughs> and now you get the rarity. Your birth year. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Good one. Yeah. You look good for 80. Thank you. That's right. It's pretty awesome, man. I can't wait to watch that tonight. I mean, two teams that are both very physical, gotten off to great starts. Under the kick again. He skies another one, but this will go deep into the end zone. College football rankings each and every week are brought to you by Chick fil A. Of course, that big game with Alabama going on the road the first time this year into a hostile environment. Of course, played in Atlanta against these Miami Hurricanes a couple weeks ago, but heading to the swamp. A whole nother animal. South Carolina, their last trip to Athens, they actually beat the Georgia Bulldogs. I'm not so sure that's going to happen today. I mean, we just have a great weekend of college football. And, and I tell you what, Joe, I can't wait to buckle up and just watch as many games as humanly possible when this one goes final because we have a lot to look forward to in what is another excellent weekend of matchups. What is the answer for this Miami offense, Greg? You've got to just keep feeding the wide receivers. Their advantage against this Michigan State defense is on the perimeter against their corners. Their wide receivers against their corners is an advantage to Miami. You've got to continue to take advantage of that. King. Look to the left. Now comes back to the right side. And he was looking to his favorite target, Rambo, but it's incomplete. As Rambo had Brantley coming in and closing, the freshman who's from Florida went to Venice High School in Sarasota before he headed to play in the Big Ten in East Lansing. Yeah, and I think this was actually one that he might have gotten away with. That right there doesn't look as bad, but looked like he arrived just a touch before the ball did. Could have very easily been pass interference, but I think it was just close enough. It was pretty bang bang. I'm okay with the official keeping the flag in his pocket. King on second down, spins out, gets it to Harris. Harris cuts back at the 20 and then is taken down, and it's Brantley again. It's been really impressive to watch this Michigan State defense. We all know that Miami has excellent athleticism, great speed on the field. And this Michigan State defense, really the second and third level, has done an awesome job flying sideline to sideline to neutralize that advantage. They've really done a good job of that so far today. Three of eight on third down. Third and nine. Rambo's to the bottom of your screen. King looks to the top. Drives the ball there. It's incomplete. Smith couldn't hold on to it. And Scotty Hazelton's defense did their job. 
Now Hazleton said what a difference a year makes. He goes finally the full off season with the guys where they can learn the defense. Said they weren't learning stuff last spring when all the COVID protocols were in. Everybody had to go back home and then you're just trying to get on the field and play ball. He said this is different this year. This is a cohesive unit now this defense. Very much and they playing like it. Now Miami's helping them a little bit with drops and mistakes and playing behind the sticks but they've really done a good job of flying around and taking away what Miami does best. They move heavily on. Punt and he tried to get after it. And the flag comes down as heavily as on the ground. They came crashing into him. 51 yard punt, but we will await the flag. It was fourth and nine. Personal foul. Welcome to kicker. Defense. The ball is not tipped. It'll be a 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And this is a big mistake from Michigan State. They had played a very smart football game in the first 30 minutes. And right here, Miami, after a great three and out by your defense, you give them new life. You just can't do that. And you got to attack the kicking foot. You can't just go straight at the punter's body. Just a, just a bad mistake there from Michigan State. Only Carr, backup tight end who plays special teams. And running in on Headley. And that is how the Miami offense stays on the field. Defense did their job. And then Carr a little too aggressive. Harris patient and then gets to the edge. And cuts inside for a gain of eight. Flag is down back at the 32. Holding offense number 60 10 yard penalty first down that time they're going to get Zion Nelson the left tackle Just can't continue to have these mistakes this defense is too good they're, they're too athletic at the second and third levels to continually play behind the sticks you have to stay in rhythm if you're this offense and with the way Miami has been pitching and catching on some of the underneath stuff Surprised they're not starting their second half by throwing some of those hitches underneath that were so good for them. King and a tough run. He can get upfield pretty quickly. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Good job. When you get behind the sticks, your goal as a quarterback get half of it back. Usually it's through the air, but the King doing a good job with his legs there. Harris gets ahead, straddling just over the 40-yard line. A third and five, a long five from there. Halliday with the tackle. So far today, Charleston Rambo has been their go-to guy in the passing game. He's working against a freshman in Charles Brantley. I like this matchup if I'm Miami. Run him on one of those locked hitches that's been really effective so far today. And then at some point, hit him with the double move. We'll stop and go, a little hitch and go. Not here on a critical down and distance. Third down and five. King trying to extend the play. Trying to get to the edge, but he is taken down. And that was Crouch who was staying with King. And King is still down. The last thing that the Canes want to see their six year college football veteran being driven into the ground that right shoulder he reaches for it right away that clavicle shoulder area fine just nowhere near that medical tent and it went down hard on that right shoulder moments ago Lou Headley big Lou Headley on to punt away to Jaden Reed been some pre-snap movement Ball start. Offense. Number three. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. These penalties today for Coach Diaz's team. So King loosening up on the sideline. 
Eight penalties for 68 yards. Big number 94. Six foot four Australian puncher on the punt away. Where's that 94? Because the Rock wore 94 back in the day. Reed, fair catch. Of course, Katie, Lou Headley has a college football bio like no other. That is so true. He grew up playing Australian rules football and fell in love with the game, but school was never his passion. So he dropped out of high school, took a job as a scaffold for seven years, then became a co-owner of a tattoo shop in Bali, but he never lost the itch to play the game. He was convinced to join and train with Pro Kick Australia while he got his GED. He enrolled at a JUCO in San Fran. From there, Miami took notice. He flew across the country and became a cane in 2019. He easily could have turned pro guys after last season, but he told me getting his college degree was a priority. With a three-year-old son, he wanted to see this through. And he is seeing it through, and so is Kenneth Walker, who just is continually seeing the defensive backfield of Miami, because that's where he's running to time and again, nine more yards, Greg. Yeah, and they have got to do something to slow him down, man. He has been so good here in the first 30 minutes, 35 minutes of this football game. I mean, so physical. And he gets to top speed so fast, too. And if I'm Jay Johnson, I'm taking a shot right here. Second and short, I know my back's going to get it. I'm going to try to throw it over Miami's head. It's a play caller's dream. But instead, they keep it on the ground with Walker. And again, they move the chains. But the point of emphasis for the Miami defense has been trying to stop the run. Remember last year, the whole situation against North Carolina when they got gashed for 554 rushing yards? They moved a lot of the defensive coaches around to various positions. But that has been the point of emphasis. We have to be better against the run. And it starts with tackling. I mean, they have not tackled well today. They didn't tackle well against Alabama. So they have to get that addressed. And then you also got to do a better job leveraging the football. I and mean, there have been way too many examples today where Kenneth Walker's been able to get to the edge at the perimeter, and there's no Miami Hurricane defender there. Thorn, quick strike on the slant, and Hunt couldn't haul it in. I'm Jay Johnson. This offensive line is big and veteran. I'm just going to pound it with Walker. I like the idea, a little quick pop pass. Had a good opportunity there with Hunt. Wasn't able to bring it in, but man, anytime you drop back and throw it right now, you're almost doing Miami a favor. Second and 10. Thorn had a man right in his face, but was able to get it complete to Reed. And Reed with the spin and a first down. That play was near disaster, and Thorn and Reed made magic. Man, what a great job by Thorne. He's got the presence from McLeod there immediately. Got to get the ball out so quick. And he wears it, too. And how about the run after catch by Reed? Just a thing of beauty from the outstanding wide receiver. They've been doing that for a long time together, Thorne and Reed. First down, Thorne pumps. Goes to the outside, incomplete. Thorne and Reed, who grew up together, very close relationship, known each other on a football field since sixth grade playing youth football together. And it shows, too. <laughs> it's just the chemistry between the two is outstanding. And it's amazing to see when you see a quarterback that just really loves his wide receiver. You could tell there's a love there between Peyton Thorne and Jaden Reed. There's a lot of trust in that, too. And I'm going to throw it to you. Go make a play for me. And Reed does more often than not. Second and ten. They go inside to Hayward. Former running back, son of Ironhead. Like a freight train for Michigan State. And there is De'Ara King actually heading to the locker room. He was telling people he was fine. The trainers want to know it for sure. 24 yards for Connor Hayward. This time he goes to lock it. Start in the career of Peyton Thorne. He was here on the road against a top 25 team, managing things well. 
Distributing the ball. This should be a big drive with a three-point lead halfway through the third. And it's Walker. He continues to break tackles, and he's inside the 20-yard line for the Spartans. Big day out of Walker. 15 more yards to his total. I mean, he's just wearing them out on this backdoor cut over and over and over again. It's probably the fourth or fifth time he's found it. Probably the fourth or fifth time he's had a huge gain as well. And how about the run as he gets to the next level? Making guys miss, finishing the run. Just a clinic tape in the run game for Kenneth Walker. Well, he sticks that outside leg, and he's able to wiggle back to the inside. He's done that a couple of times this afternoon. Kenneth Walker, 134 yards rushing. And he gets this ball to the 11-yard line. And just one play after another, just cut back, cut back, cut back, almost every single time, it seems, when he gets the football. There's no backside contain from Miami. So Kenneth Walker just hesitates, let that flow pass him by, cuts it back, and there's room. Sometimes it's 10 yards, sometimes it's 12 yards, sometimes it's five yards, but there's always space. This young man always seems to find it. And play of this drive coming for Thorne in the Spartans offense. And look at this. Speedy Nailer, touchdown Michigan State. Stay consistent. They stay the course. That's what we've seen from Michigan State this year. A lot of people looking around and saying, boy, have they changed things quickly. Transfer portal will do it. Good coaching will do it. And just like that, it is 17 to 7. And it's a Peyton Thorn in the side of Miami's defense. How about the quarterback? How about the play call? Pitch and catch, and Naylor takes it to the house as Sparty starting to open. It's a 10-point lead for this 2-0 Spartans team. The concern for Miami in mounting a comeback is what we just saw that happen to De'Ara King. This is how he came down at the end of the play, then he went off to the locker room. Yeah, rolling to the right, kind of lands awkwardly on that right shoulder. They looked at it briefly, went to the locker room. I'm glad to see he's going to be going back on the field. Katie, what can you tell us? Yeah, guys, well, I was told that his shoulder is okay. He just went back to the locker room for a quick minute to receive a little bit of treatment. And if there's anything that we know about this kid, if he can move and his team is in need of somebody to lead them, he's going to be back out on that field. So showing a, some great resiliency right now. Dude's got unbelievable heart, man. That Being dude has man. heart. Dealing with adversity, it's all he knows. And he gets it complete and then coming back in to Arroyo. They're going to need to help him out, too. I mean, their quarterback has given them opportunities. They made a couple mistakes. Hasn't been flawless. The fumble, the interception. But, man, he's had a lot of drops, too. I mean, he needs these wide receivers to step up because Michigan State's going to start challenging them at the line of scrimmage. Okay. He's to the other side, and in doing so, is able to get it complete to Smith. Plenty of time in this football game. We need to put it in hyper speed just yet. Still a couple possession game. And goes over there on the sideline. First down. King. And he gets it complete for another first down to D. Wiggins. So that shoulder's fine after that throw. <laughs> that was a long throw. That ball traveled in the air quite a ways. So I think he's going to be just fine the rest of the game. Glad to see it too. This young man. They need him to get this offense going. Harris is met right at midfield, and then he just falls forward after Van Sumeren was able to trap him. They just haven't been able to get much going on the ground, too. That's a testament to Michigan State, that deep at the front, just flying around. Cam Harris. Only four yards per carry, and he had one that was pretty decent earlier. And 48 rush yards as a team. Second and nine. Brett Lashley at Miami's 
staff trying to spark something here with the play calling for Derek King. And that is incomplete. Smith was the intended target. And there was some pressure coming straight up the middle. And a lot of heat right up the middle. Rivera's crouch applying it to De'Ara King. And I think it's four down territory here. I, I know it's early, but your defense hasn't done a great job against Kenneth Walker all day. I think you've got to start thinking about it. If you can get to fourth and two or three, keep the offense on the field as part of the field. For now, it's a third and nine. Pressure off the edge, able to pick it up. Now King tries to extend, and it's a dragging to the right and complete for a first down to Brinson. And they feel like Brinson is going to develop into a very good receiver as the years go on. 6-2 target with the conversion there. Good job on the scramble drill. King escapes for the moment and then gets it complete. And here is Rambo as Rambo has it inside the 15-yard line. And a Michigan State player is down back at the 42-yard line. And after a 24-yard reception by Charleston, Miami players are basically going to going to try to pick up that linebacker. Well, in comes the wrapper right around. When you have two going to one, you have a bust up front clearly, and Beasley is able to force De'Eric King out of the pocket. Fortunately for De'Eric, he had a guy waiting as a great third down conversion. So got to have it kind of drive for Miami. King. That was denied as Crouch was coming across defensively and looked to get a piece of it. Ooh, man, that was close. De'Eric just a little bit late there on the over route as Crouch almost got a piece of it. You see him come back to him. That was number two in the progression, and it got deflected by Crouch. Really close to being intercepted. Got to be on time. These windows are tight in this part of the field. One by ten. Second down, King. And they're short to Harley. And they're saying, hit the ground, incomplete. Going to be third and ten. Let's take a peek. Yep, it's a good job by the official seeing that ball get trapped by Harley down around his ribcage. What does Rep Lashley go with here on third and ten? Tenth play of the drive. The four of eleven on third downs. The pressure look coming here from Michigan State. Let's see if they drop out. King to the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Kings. It's a big day for Rambo. Flag is down at the one yard line as Rambo's off celebrating. How about this throw? Woo. Oh, oh. Tight window? Yeah, I'll put it right through it. Thread the needle. Look at that. And as you see the safety coming over the top, Angelo Gross. The flag, are they going to check it for targeting? The result of the play is a touchdown. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense on the 15. That aspect of the play is under further review. That's gross who they've tagged with targeting. Remember, he had an interception before halftime. In order for it to be targeting, there has to be an indicator. And the indicator would be a launch or thrust. Let's look at gross. There is the launch. See him launch upward. Towards Rambo. That's the launch. That's the indicator. We know it's a defenseless player as Rambo's a receiver, carries that defenseless tag. The question now becomes is there forcible contact to the head or neck area? And right there, it's very close. It looks like he hits him more in the midsection, frankly, than a, the head or neck area. But you can see the launch and you know he's defenseless, so this is going to be really close. 
Our three time Super Bowl champion referee John Perry what say you. Greg if you just keep rolling we're going to put stripes on you. Look, <laughs> we don't have all three ingredients in my opinion. I'm with you. The, the player does a nice job of trying to get the shoulder in and the helmet out and hit the target zone which is beneath the neck and above the waist. I don't think this is targeting. I agree. I hope they'll take it off. I agree with you John. He doesn't make forcible contact to the head or neck area. He makes forcible contact but it's to the body and lucky for him Rambo jumped to make the play if Rambo was at eye level that probably would be targeting so I don't think it is like you said it has to have all three after further review there is no targeting on the play number 15 may remain in the game the hit was shoulder to chest he's on the play touchdown and that's big for Michigan State defensively but what did we just say about that got to have it on this drive yeah. as the touchdown rings are being put forth by Charleston Rambo Charleston Rambo who has 12 catches for 156 yards and two touchdowns on a day where there's been choppy waters for the Miami offense Charleston Rambo has been smooth sailing Charleston Rambo has been dynamite for Manny Diaz and Rip Lashley and De'Ara King and De'Ara King who went to the locker room to get treatment after being driven into the ground on that right shoulder, he looked just fine. He looks very comfortable. <laughs> that was a very nice drive from Miami offensively. And with that spark, we got ourselves a game here with under four minutes to go in the third. Kings over 300 yards and two touchdowns. Katie? Well, guys, Charleston Rambo came over to a celebration on the sidelines, got the touchdown rings, threw them up for us, got it on camera, and then I said, how'd you hold on to that? And he put up the muscles. He showed me his bicep. He said, I've been working. I've been getting up on my strength. <laughs> Rightfully so. That was showcase there. And that was, that was awesome, man. Like, there's nothing that, oh, look at him. <laughs> you see me. I like it. I like it, man. How about Rambo today? Getting his number called. A wide receiver room that has really been up and down. I mean, this is a talented group. Man, they haven't played like it very consistently. Derek King, of course, has a great relationship with Mike Harley, but Rambo is developing right before our very eyes into a go-to playmaker for this Hurricane offense. Remember when he was a few years ago with Oklahoma? A few yeah. Years ago, it's kind of five touchdowns over 700 yards receiving you thought he was going to be the next great one and Mims burst on the scene at Oklahoma right. yeah but listen this new age of college football you get these second chances these opportunities try to find the right fit and Brett Lashley said we want to get better we want to improve on the outside and Charleston Rambo provides that he is having just an A plus kind of day and he's got his games right back in this game. Big one going on between Cincinnati and Indiana. Let's hear from Kevin. Tess, let's go to Bloomington, Indiana. They are trailing Cincinnati. Start of the second half here on ESPN. And then to the outside, nice little call, DJ Matthews for the score. Yeah, a little trickery there, misdirection, get the linebackers to suck up and get it outside. All right, the Hoosiers now got the lead, 21-17. And on the ensuing kickoff, and look at Trey Tucker, 99 yards to the house. Classic case, Indiana feeling themselves. Cincinnati says not so fast. Right now, 23-21 Cincinnati on ESPN. Back to you, Tess. So a good duel there. Ritter, Penix, and then special teams playing a big role. As Tucker brings it back 99 yards. And we got a good one right here on ABC. And what a game we'll have tonight on ABC. The whiteout in Happy Valley between Auburn and Penn State. But it's getting loud all of a sudden at Hard Rock with Michigan State back on offense. Walker had nothing in the middle and then comes out and bounces to the left. And he's able to get five yards. That's a great individual performance as we just highlighted Rambo, but then Kenneth Walker on the other oh side. Kenneth Walker is at 144 yards. This dude's been unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. And we've seen some good ones this year. Kyron Williams at Notre Dame. We saw some good ones last week at Arkansas and Texas. I tell you what, this guy right here, Kenneth Walker, you need to learn his name. This guy's the real deal for the Spartans. Second and five. Feed the beast and push the pile. It'll be third and about three from there. 
big down here for Michigan State. Momentum's now shifted to the Hurricanes. I think you got to go with what they've done so well. And that's one of those little bootlegs out the back door. A fake walker around the left. I'd slip Hayward out to the flat. It looks like they're going to go with a little wildcat. Hayward and Walker in the backfield for Michigan State on third and three. Walker with Hayward blocking in front. And he will have a good surge ahead for the first down. Connor Hayward's 230 pounds out in front. Of Walker at 210 has got that burst. Jay Johnson, the offensive coordinator, who's really utilizing Hayward in dynamic ways this year. The transition to tight end, you see him in the backfield. He played every position in high school. He's to do it all. And there's the star of this offense this year. Fresh set of downs for Sparty. Play action, Thorne. Running out of options, so he tucks and runs for two yards. Taken down by Flag. Corey Flag with the tackle. A good job by the quarterback there. A lot of young guys in this spot, man. You get a shot called downfield, you get all excited. You start thinking, I'm going to throw a touchdown pass and put this crowd on their butts. And sure enough, he doesn't take the bait. Miami does a good job covering it. He makes a guy miss, doesn't make a bad play worse. Sometimes the defense wins, get what you can, set up second down. It's a good job by the young quarterback. Pointing at the interior of that offensive line. Ball start. Offense. Number 59, five-yard penalty, second down. Thanks for a second, 13. 16 combined penalties in this game. Michigan State is their first of the half. Michigan State is going to use a timeout. And that's the first that they have exhausted here in this second half. Peyton Thorne and this offense facing a second and 13 when they were current return to action. Of course, Sunday NFL countdown will be coming your way 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. The all access with Jameis Winston. Takes you inside his offseason transformation. And Randy Moss ranking the week's best catches in You Got Moss. That's how to get you started on a Sunday of NFL action. The slant was denied. Batted right down, back in his face. As Chance Williams was right there in the mug of Pink Thorne. It's a good job by Thorne seeing that presence on the RPO, trying to get it out around the defender. Right there. Excellent work by Williams, getting his hands up, making it hard on the quarterback. This isn't one of those sleepy noon settings here. They were tailgating early. They were ready to roar to see their teams deliver on all the promise this year. And right now, that crowd is roaring, looking for a big stop on third and 13. Shallow cross is incomplete. Reed was the intended target. But Gervin Hall was there defensively. 
And Michigan State is going to be punting away to Miami, who is sensing just a bit of momentum. Stevenson back. Perringer's fifth punt of the day. He's had two inside the 20. He's looking for three. And Stevenson with pretty nifty return that gets him out to the 25. Far side of the field, there is a flag down at the 33 yard line. It's interesting to see what we've seen out of De'Ara King today, isn't it? It's been up, down, and all around. And right now he's over 300 yards, a couple of touchdown strikes, and he's got his team right back in it. Left the game to get treatment on that shoulder. During the kick, holding, return team number zero. The foul being forced from the end of the kick. First down, Miami. Game track is brought to you by Mission Tiger. It gives us a chance to have a closer look at De'Eric King. And he's been excellent, really, weathering the storm. He's going against a good defense. I mean, there's no denying that Michigan State does a really solid job taking away what you do well. But he's just hung in there. And he hasn't had a ton of help. The protection hasn't been great. The receivers haven't been great. But he's continued to drive the football. How about that throw in a tight window? Here, scrambling, keeping the play alive as the pocket collapsed around him. And then the patience here on the throw back to Rambo in the back of the end zone. And this one, I mean, just threading the needle to Rambo on the in route. Man, he has been excellent today. And it hasn't been all perfect. He's had some ups and downs. He's had some things he'd love to have back. But it's not about where you start, it's where you finish. And he is finishing really well so far. And around, this is Harley. Harley gets just about a yard and a half. Cody Brown came into the game as the running back there. Plays to Cam Harris. Cody Brown's the freshman from Georgia. They're a little thinned out at running back. Donald Cheney, who they expected to have a sensational year, he's lost the season with a torn ACL. Jalen Knight Guyton is not available for another week. So Brown is the running back. See him number 24th quarter. They trail by three at home. To the Spartans team. Smith with the reception from De'Eric King. First play of the fourth quarter. Flag comes in. You saw Rhett Lashley right there on the sideline saying, Can we please have the flag there? And we will look to see what they come up with here. Let's take a peek. Crown of the helmet. Ooh. Charles Brantley, freshman, lowering his head. Yeah, I mean, does he initiate contact with the crown of the helmet? It's really close. I would imagine that's what the officials are looking at. That, of course, if you initiate contact with the crown of the helmet, that is targeting. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense. Number 15. That play is under further review. Take a break while they review this play is officially under review as targeting is the call. Go in, you don't see what you hit. That's very dangerous on the tackler. King on first down. Live ball out there, bouncing around, and the Spartans have it. by Panachute. It was Beasley crashing home on King. A fumble recovered by the defense. First and 10, Michigan State. And we'll look at it. It's the ball traveling forward. Oh, it is. But is it going forward is the other question. So obviously, if the ball's still in the hand as he initiates Replay the throw. The call on the field, fumble. First down. It Michigan looks State. as though the ball is going forward, but it's still traveling backwards, so it's essentially a lateral. And how about Beasley right here as he beats Nelson around the edge? And Sparty's defense making a huge play. 
right when they started to feel as though they were losing some serious momentum, they step up and shut the door. Just an awesome play by Beasley. In the Michigan State is a walk-on. Worked his butt off. High motor kind of guy. He delivered there. And now they go underneath trying to get it to Speedy Naylor, and that goes nowhere. It was read well by Bubba Bolden. But what a turn here early in the fourth quarter. Sack fumble Beasley. Recovery, Jacob Panashuk. And now Michigan State is sitting there on the Miami 16-yard line. Second 13. Thorne sets up the screen. Walker trying to use the blockers, and he does so to the 10 yard line. It'll be third down from the 10. Another good play there by Walker. Pretty well covered there on the screen, and he somehow able to find his way up to a nice positive gain. He is so quick, so athletic, and a huge third down here for Miami's defense. Third and seven. Scott Fitzpatrick, the big target to the top of your screen. He goes six foot four. His favorite target, Reed, is down there, number one, bottom of your screen. Third and seven. Hook for the touchdown, Jaden Reed. The turnover is cashed in to a TD. Big swing moment for Sparty. this quarterback look at the timing three-step hitch know exactly where you're going with the football and then you body up that wide receiver you put it right in the middle of his body because that safety's coming over the top he's going to hit the wide receiver if you lead him too much throw it right in the window hold him up just a beautiful throw and an excellent conversion from michigan state Thorne and reed we told you they've been together since sixth grade playing youth football then they went and said, let's play high school football together. Now they're doing it in college football. Longtime friends will take you back to the day when it was smaller crowds under the Friday night lights. This was Thorne to read back then. And folks, it hasn't changed. These guys have Sparty feeling awful confident early this season. A 10-point lead. Big touchdown catch moments ago. Just over 13 minutes to play. And Michigan State is looking for an upset on the road against number 24, Miami. Katie. Well, guys, when they were in high school in Naperville, Thorne and Reed both planned to play at Western Michigan together. Well, Jaden Reed's a year older, so he played one season for the Broncos, nabbing All-American honors. During that time, though, Thorne actually decommitted and decided to go to Michigan State instead. Well, shortly after Reed's freshman season, he called Thorne and said he wanted to transfer. Thorne answered, well, I know just the place. Come on. <laughs> the two are not just lifelong teammates. They're lifelong friends. It's pretty special. They've gotten to experience so much of their life together through sports. That is awesome, man. I just love it. I love it. And to see the chemistry, I mean, it's so obvious when you watch it. They have a great relationship. It's been so fun to see that chemistry. Harris. It's a good run by Harris. And he goes for about 12 yards there. First down, Miami. I just don't know if I can appropriately sum up how big the last 10 minutes have been for the Spartans. It felt like it was slipping away a little bit. Miami had him on the move. You get a guy called for target. Next thing you know, sack fumble. Third down, a couple plays later, touchdown. Just huge. King, a lot of time. Nothing there. And then finally was taken down. As Petrowski comes up with the sack. He made his first start last week, played very well. Everybody around the program just loves his effort. And there's the guy that turned things around, huh? Drew Beasley. And sack fumbles. Got two forced fumbles today. He's been all over the place. <laughs> They're happy to have him back at the end of the line of scrimmage defensively. Second 12. And then rush against King. Goes underneath to his tight end. Will Mallory, who makes a man miss, and 
Had to hold on to that football once he was tackled by Crouch, but it's a first down for the Canes. And we haven't really seen any throws yet from King way down the field. At some point, they're going to have to go. And I know that Michigan State's playing soft. They're trying to keep everything in front. It's a two-score game, all those things. But at some point, you got to at least stretch the defense vertically with one of your wide receivers on the perimeter. Harris again straight ahead, a gain of three. 12 minutes to play, trailing by 10. And it's such an important game. All the expectations for Miami this year, Michigan State, keep throwing this label on them. Ahead of schedule, ahead of schedule. Maybe they're right on the schedule they consider, right? Win now. You can transform rosters in this sport because of the immediate eligibility in the transfer portal. Second and seven. King. Of course, the quick feet and the quick burst. Flag is down back at the 48-yard line in the offensive backfield, most likely holding, and they'll walk this back. So they're going to get the center, Corey Gaynor. Holding, offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, second down. And sometimes it's hard on the offensive line when your quarterback's stepping up in the pocket. You have your defensive lineman under control, and then the quarterback moves, the defensive lineman moves with him, and you just don't let go in time. That's tough on Gaynor, wiping out what was a really nice play from King. Look at these penalties today, Greg. Just unbelievable. And that's it's been a huge story in Miami for the last several years. It's uncharacteristic to see so many against Michigan State. Second 17 drives it to Brinson, and Brinson's going to make a third and very manageable at the 43-yard line. I like this young receiver, Brinson. He's well, they got love some him. speed. He's got mm. some, he's got a chance, man. He's on Northwestern High. There's so many great players come out of there. Four down territory, obviously, if you're Miami. Third and two for now. Harris, and Harris is going to stretch out for that line to gain. Halliday with the tackle. Coming up on 10 minutes to play. Game turned around. Listen, Michigan State did a great job of jumping out to the lead. 17-7. Thorne has managed things well with three touchdowns. Walker has been dynamic with over 150 yards rushing, but then it was the defense. And Miami had the momentum, and then Beasley and Panashuk. Sack fumble and the fumble recovery. And now a fourth and one, according to the mark here, for those two big guys on the defensive line for Michigan State. So fourth down, fourth and one. King dives ahead easily, gets the first down, just launches his body ahead for three and a half yards. But he does so making contact with that right shoulder that he left to go to the locker room for treatment on. He is tough as nails. And this is, I mean, how about putting it all on the line right here? Third and one, you have a miscommunication, whatever it takes. Just selling out for his team, man. Tell me every other guy wearing orange right now doesn't respond to that. They see our quarterback. He's got a hurt arm. Guy's out here grinding. We got to make a play for him. That's so big. Derek King is just such a star. Harris testing the left side, and he is wrapped up by Henderson. Xavier Henderson with a very good tackle on Harris. Tell you what, man, that's one thing I did not expect coming into the day is just how pressed I'd be with these safeties for Michigan State. Henderson, of course, had that acrobatic interception oh. last week that was absolutely ridiculous. But, man, they have been really good tackling in the open field. Gross has done a great job as well, covering a lot of space. Those are two difference makers in the back end for the Spartans. Henderson's a big talker of the defense. Here's the ten sets. And that's into the ground in front of Mike Harley. Third and ten is coming up. You have to wonder right there, De'Aaron King on that fourth and one, go forward. Got up slow, arm hurting, right arm, throwing arm. That one didn't have any juice on. 
It's probably the ball. Just didn't have any velocity coming off that right hand of his. Earlier in this half, he was driven into the ground and then went to the locker room to get treatment. And then courageously has come back in to fight. To wonder if it had an impact on the accuracy of that throw. Third and ten. King. Across the grain between three defenders looking for Rambo. It's incomplete. It's fourth down. on the sideline for Miami and, and even if when they're walking out I mean, they got to pick up the pace man I mean there's just the, the urgency needs to be there the scramble drill the guys are just kind of moping around I I do not like at all what I'm seeing from the Hurricanes right now not just offensively but from their special teams unit as well and they're coming on with Borgales for a 55 yard attempt from the freshman 55 yard attempt to try to cut it to a touchdown margin. Like it was nothing. Borogolis cuts it to seven. 8 11 to play when we return to South Florida. Borogolis moments ago, and we're back to just a touchdown game between Michigan State and the Canes. Let's go to the studio, Kevin. Yes, let's go to Norman. The catch of the year so far from a defensive back, DJ Graham pulling off the Odell Beckham. Yeah, it reminds me of a catch I made in 1994, one-hander from a defensive line. Look, and then you woke up. The alarm <laughs> clock started ringing. Oklahoma wins 23-16, to surviving against Nebraska. Big Cinco, DJ Uyunglele, getting ready for Georgia Tech here. Play consistent, be authoritative, lead your team, show leadership. That's what they need. Clemson's won 29 straight at home. You get that matchup coming up after our contest down in South Florida, Tess. Look forward to it. Of course, the big one tonight, Auburn and Penn State. Thorne gets it quickly to Reed. Reed utilizes the block for nine yards. Let me show you what's happening just north into the west of where we are. This is what happens in South Florida. That is about a three-block wall, like a rectangular wall of rain. There's the stadium on the right, and the, it's as if it's raining in someone's backyard, and the next house over, it's dry. <laughs> it's amazing. Absolutely. Just amazing. a wall of rain. Second and one. Met in the backfield was Walker. That was Jared Harrison Hunt, who gets the tackle for loss, and it'll set up a big third down with under seven and a half minutes to play. How about the big fella right here? And he's coming on, man. This is going to be a guy you need to know moving forward. Big number 81, Harrison Hunt. It's going to be a handful here for the next couple years for the Canes. Former basketball player up in New York at Christ the King. They're a basketball powerhouse. Now he's a big defensive tackle. What will they come up with on third and six? Thorne to pass. Third and six going to tuck. Run. Get it with ease. Look at Peyton Thorne pass midfield. Big play for Michigan State. Now you're going to see these rushers get past the quarterback. Now they're past the quarterback. And next thing you know, the Red Sea parts for Peyton Thorne. And he hits it. This young man, very athletic, does a great job with the ball in his hands. And having another huge conversion with his legs there. Excellent decision from the quarterback. 22 yards on a critical third and six. He's got a great football IQ from a football family. Kenneth Walker. You know, think about his upbringing. His grandfather, John, was D3 head coach. His father was a good player. His father played ball and then went on to coach and win a Division III national championship in 2019. And now here's Peyton, who was under-recruited a bit. Mark Antonio, former head coach, said, reminded him of Kirk Cousins, who was also under-recruited. They had a decommitment late in a recruiting class, and Peyton was made a late offer, and here he is. Productive starting quarterback. Speedy Naylor goes for 
seven yards to the outside. What I've been most impressed with is his poise, man. I mean, the guy doesn't get rattled. You never see him flinch. Been accurate with the football these first couple weeks. I mean, he's hit some beautiful throws downfield, too, to complement that run game. You know they're going to be able to pound the football with that offensive line and running back. But, man, if you can hit the play action up and marry it up with it, it's going to be a difficult offense to defend this year. By the way, on his mom's side, his grandfather, Dave Martin, played football at Wisconsin. So, he's got football everywhere you look in the bloodline. Third down and three. Almost have got to have it for Miami's defense. Pitch to Walker. Run fit happens, and look at Walker still surging ahead. I mean, they tied him up at the line of scrimmage, and he just surges ahead for two more yards. So it's fourth and one right at the 40. Man, decision coming here. I, as an offensive guy and a veteran group along the front and a great running back, I'll keep my offense on the field. Walker's averaging 6.1 per. He's gone for 153 yards today. Fourth and one. Quarterback sneak, and let's see where they spot it. You can see Thorne reaching out and over. And this mark should give it to him. Let me put it right on that yellow line, the unofficial yellow line that we provide for you. And we did see Thorne stretch out that ball. I think he got it. That was a good job by Thorne, too, just following his center. The route to potentially converting. You see the center work a little to the right. Thorne just follows him. I think he got enough. Tough to see where the ball is at. There he is as he reaches forward. Now, where's forward progress here? Right. It's just so difficult. Pull the chain. First down, Michigan State. Very close. Yeah, by a pimple of leather. They would look at it, but more often than not, you're not going to be able to overturn the spot on the field, especially when it's in a wad of mess there in the middle of the field. So a great job there by the quarterback in his center. Got to give some love to Matt Allen, another in a long line of great Spartans with the last name Allen. Of course, Jack is the older brother, right? Two-time All-American. Brian, his other brother, who's on the team. Thorne. Wide open! And put a nail in it, says Speedy Nailer. Thirty-nine-yard touchdown strike, Thorne to Nailer. Down passes for Peyton Thorne. Miami cut into it. Miami had this home crowd roaring, looking for a stop. And Peyton Thorne stepped up on that drive. Converted the third and six with his legs, 22 yards. Converted the fourth and one. And instead of running down the clock, instead of grinding towards a win, Greg, this is how you get games of the college football season. Spartans are up by two touchdowns. Kevin. Remind our audience, we're less than two minutes away from kickoff between Dabo and Clemson hosting Jeff Collins' Georgia Tech squad. That game will start on ESPN2. Back to you. Thank you very much. Take this college football Saturday deep into the night. And some good ones in the late window, right? Couple. <laughs> My goodness, we got some action today. You better lace them up and throw some ankle braces on, Joe, because it's going to get it is going to get wild today in college football. So just over four minutes to play, King. That is picked off every which way. It Spartans and Ronald Williams jumps it. Interception, Michigan State.
fourth Miami turnover today. They've thrown hitch after hitch after hitch. Not this time. As Ronald Williams, he gave up a bunch of those hitches, but he makes him pay on the last one, undercutting it, and making a great interception to put this thing on ice. Another one of those transfers. He started his career at Alabama. All the new players on this roster, the reshaping of a team with a really good coaching staff who also knows how to develop and how to win. I'm take a little pause to try to fix the chains. As far as I'm concerned, they can throw them out. We can just go electronic in the future of football. Let's look at today's Aflac trivia question. We're here at Hard Rock, of course. And it's 17 miles from campus. One of four FBS schools play their home games 15 or more miles from campus. What are the other three? So Miami plays over 15 miles away. You got three other schools in major college football where their home stadium is over 15 miles from campus. Ooh, that's a tough one. It is a tough one. The first one that comes to Miami is UCLA. Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl, sure, from Westwood out to Pasadena. That would make sense. That's one. Kenneth Walker, and all he pulls, it's Thorne keeping it. All right, so you say UCLA is one of them. I think UConn, you know, stores to uh, East Hartford would be one of them. Let's see the answer here. So you got Miami playing more than 15. UCon UTSA. Wow. UTSA is the other one. The Alamo the Dome. Alamo Dome. Over 15 miles away from Texas San Antonio. I would not have gotten that one. We go from rainbows to rain. Appropriate weather, I'm sure, for the way some Miami fans are feeling watching this fourth quarter. What an incredible turn. I mean, Miami had the look of a team that was finding its rhythm as Walker will continue to add to his total. And then Michigan State, Beasley has the sack fumble. This thing goes sack fumble right. to pushing him right off a cliff. That was it. I mean, it's just amazing how quickly things can turn. And Michigan State's defense has been excellent all day. I mean, forcing turnovers, making De'Eric King somewhat uncomfortable. When the plays have been there to be made in the secondary, they've made them. And they've been constantly applying pressure to that offensive line. And De'Ara King has battled as hard as humanly possible. It just hasn't been in the cards. Michigan State, just too physical, too much for this Hurricanes team. So impressive what Mel Tucker's done in year number two. Give credit to Scotty Hazelton, right? The defensive coordinator comes in, installs that 4 2 5. You know, last year they had so many difficulties. He said there were things we were putting forth in spring this year that we should have been learning last spring, but with, you know, all the COVID postponements, and there he is. He's got that look, too. Look at that. Like gray salt and pepper. I love beard. I it. Like the beard was, I wish the beard was like four or five inches longer. Yeah. Like middle of the chest. I think He's that's where it was guy. at one point. He is a great guy. I've really gotten to really enjoyed getting to know him over the last couple years. Walker. As he gets free inside the 10 he's over 160 yards today Kevin does want to remind our audience over on ESPN 2 is the early start with Clemson having the ball the as they are on offense like taking on Georgia Tech when, like when our game is over like down in South Florida we will go to Clemson for that matchup against Georgia Tech back to you thank you very much Kenneth Walker, 172, 172 yards. Guy opens up against Northwestern. He puts up tremendous numbers, goes for 264. Obviously the blowout of an overmatched opponent last week, and then comes down here to Miami, and he goes for 172. Here's Reed looking for a block in front, getting to the edge, getting to the goal line. And now the Spartans are just pouring it on.
Just a great job around the edge by Hayward leading the charge. Securing the outside shoulder. And Reed scores an easy touchdown. I mean, Miami completely selling out against the run between the tackles. Nobody home on the outside. Look at his scoreboard right now, huh? Impressive. 38 to 17. This Michigan State team that hardly anybody was talking about. We think we know so much all summer long, don't we? <laughs> we read those preview magazines. Right. We go to media days. We think we know so much. Well, it just goes to show you how much things can change in a year in the new world of college football because with how you can piece together a roster by going and finding guys in the portal that can improve certain spots that you were deficient you can improve in a hurry and that's exactly what's gone on with Michigan State you have a bunch of really talented guys they've gotten far more athletic in the back end of their defense they're still very disruptive along the front and then you have some veteran guys that have gone through some of the worst years and they signed up and they were watching Michigan State football some of these guys were watching them go to the playoffs mm -hmm. and that has not been the case obviously in the last few so you have guys that have a high expectation of where Michigan State should be those guys along the offensive line those veterans those veterans on the defensive line like Jacob Slade and Jacob Panashuk and they're setting the tone for this talented group of transfers and and the outcome's been beautiful Reminder, Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One comes your way tonight right here on ABC at 7.30 Eastern. Number 22, Auburn. Number 10, Penn State. Coach Hosh Merson, year one for Auburn. And perhaps another team people weren't talking about quite enough. And people are going to say, well, who, who have they played, right? Just like they've said about, about Michigan State. And I think this is what determines it tonight. Which quarterback plays the smartest you have two teams that want to be able to run the football two defenses that pride themselves on taking away the run Bo Nix has struggled on the road in the past Sean Clifford's been up and down which quarterback's going to make the play when their team needs it tonight and I think that is what could potentially determine the outcome of the game heck of a day for the Michigan State offense heck of a fourth quarter Peyton Thorne he had some critical runs and then what he's been able to do with his arm, four touchdown passes on 18 completions. King is courageous, as always, as he gets it to Harris. Left the game, got some treatment on a shoulder, and then was out there diving ahead, you know, making contact with that shoulder that he hurt. But that's who he is, the eight-month turnaround from surgery on an ACL to end up playing Alabama in week one. <laughs> There's Alabama was not unexpected. Listen, you knew right. they were going to fight. They were going to have some moments, but Alabama did to Miami what Alabama pretty much does to everybody. Right. Nothing to be ashamed of. We've seen that before. Struggling with App State and having to fight and be resilient to get a late win against App State. And then at home, a 21-point deficit to an unranked Michigan State team. It's pretty difficult to sum up it really is what I would do if I were Miami I'd go back to the drawing board and say man we have got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot penalties drive killing penalties turnovers inability to finish in the end zone offensively not tackling in the open field defensively man they got to go back to the drawing board because this got sideways in a hurry Harris on fourth down Final minute and a half here in Miami. The beauty is, as bad as Miami feels right now at yes. one and two, they can still win the ACC. As crazy as that sounds, and I'm not saying they don't need to get a lot of things addressed, but they can still have a great year. Two non-conference losses is not going to end or derail your season. All your goals are still in front of you, but you're not going to come close to achieving those goals if you don't get things fixed offensively by finishing in the red zone and defensively with their inability to tackle in the open field. They're going to get a breather with Central Connecticut next week. Then it's a Thursday nighter against uh, a pretty tough looking Virginia team. They are at North Carolina. And that'll be the stretch that starts to define things in conference play for Miami. But it needs to pass 
the eye test a lot better than what folks have seen through three weeks. Will Mallory with the catch there. By the way, the grandson of the former Indiana head coach, the late Bill Mallory. Meanwhile, on the other side, you look at this Michigan State team, and you say, who knows? Are they the X factor in a now wildly intriguing Big Ten? Big Ten East specifically. I mean, right now with how Ohio State's playing against the run, you think they would fare real well against Michigan State and Kenneth Walker and this veteran group of offensive linemen? I would think not. So I, I think that that Big Ten East with Ohio State's inefficiencies on the defensive side is wide open. More open than it's been in quite some time. So who knows? We've seen it before. Michigan State rallies up, puts together a special season. He's batted there. I can't get enough of the Kenneth Walker story, right? This is a guy who's down there, was lightly recruited to Wake Forest. Wake Forest was his only Power 5 offer, so he took it. Never started a game there. Was productive. Never started a game there. And he wanted to be the feature back in a more pro-style offense. We talked about that style down there, that hurry up with the delay, slow mesh down there at Wake Forest. He comes to Michigan State, and he's dynamic now. Right. I mean, he's putting up stats that are incredible. Smith with the catch. 27 carries, 172. He's I'm, awesome now. I'm telling you, we've seen some really good backs. And we saw Kyron Williams in Notre Dame. We've seen Bijan Robinson in Texas. And we saw some really good backs from Arkansas last week. This dude is every bit as good as all three of those guys. Well, when the new rankings come out, you're going to see a number next to Michigan State. Yeah, and it better be a high number. <laughs> I don't want to see a 23 next to the Spartans. I want to see like a 15 at worst. This team can beat you in a lot of different ways, and it's been very impressive to watch them through three weeks. And Miami is going to drop out. Miami, one and two after three weeks of play. Michigan State, three and oh. And impressively so. Fourth quarter was tremendous. The defense able to spark the offense and then the play calling as well from Jay Johnson to say, what do you say we put this thing away? What do you say we go to the end zone? And that's what they did when Thorne went to Naylor and what had been cut to a seven point margin, the 39 yard touchdown pass to Speedy Naylor. And then they broke things wide open as Reed had the eight yard touchdown run to make it 38 to 17 an upset win on the road good solid defining win for this ascendant Michigan State team 38 to 17 folks are three and oh after the break we're going to get you to Georgia Tech and Clemson from that's a really impressive drive by the Clemson offensive line we're going to commit to the run game here. Shipley, trust your vision. Let's go down the field with the big fellas up front. Well, Clemson took possession at the Georgia Tech 39-yard line. 34 of the 39 yards rushing all by the freshman Will Shipley. He deserved to cap that drive with a score, and he did. If you have a typical airline credit card, you're not getting double miles on every purchase. You're right. I only get extra miles on some types of purchases. May I? Please. With a Capital One Venture card, you earn unlimited double miles everywhere. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Everywhere is great, but where can we use them? You can use them on any travel purchase, not just some travel purchases. <laughs> Venture gets a gold star. <laughs> What's in your wallet? New customers get our best deals on all smartphones. That's right. But what if I'm already a customer? Oh, no problem. Hey, Cam. Yeah. Oh. Same deal. Yeah. It's kind of our thing. Oh, it's a great deal. What if I'm new to AT&T? Cam, can... Oh, guys. Hey. But what about for existing same customers? Same deal. deal. <laughs> Is he okay? It's not complicated. With AT&T, everyone gets our best deals on every smartphone.
game is a mind game. Distracted? Too heavy? Too tired? Nah. That's all in your head. Train your mind. Train the game. Because your only limits are the ones you put on yourself. This is so crispy, juicy, and tender, you might even call it deluxe. Okay, now you can definitely call it deluxe. McDonald's Deluxe Crispy Chicken Sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Welcome to Allstate, where we have all new lower auto rates. And savings like that will make everyone feel like an MVP. Now get new lower auto rates with Allstate. Because better protection costs a whole lot less. You're in good hands with Allstate. Click or call for a lower auto rate today. A brand new season of Dancing with the Stars. We're one of us. One of us. Me. 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 We'll take home the Mirabal Trophy. Mirabal Trophy. I already have a spot picked out for it. Dancing with the Stars premieres Monday on ABC and stream on Hulu. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the means. If you've never been to Clemson before, make it a bucket list destination if you're a college football fan. First of all, just being inside Death Valley is a tremendous scene. But the whole scene coming in as well, as you're riding in, seeing the tailgaters everywhere, it's just so much fun. My favorite thing is the pause on the road, the painted pause. We'll quickly step aside and see if Georgia Tech can answer down by seven. Attention foodies. With this fusion of prime rib steak, melted provolone, and other magical melty stuff, Arby's is now officially a fusion restaurant. Chef Smooch. Arby's, we have the meat. Touchdown, Auburn. Touchdown, Auburn! Yeah! Woo! Nice. The new frontier I ordered is here. Tebow got a new frontier. Hey, I found a french fry on the couch. Couch fry! Barry found the couch fry! Those Auburn guys have a weird way of celebrating. Woo! With DirecTV Stream, I can get live TV and on demand together. Watch. Serena Williams. Wonder Woman. Serena Wonder Woman. Serena Wonder Woman. Serious. Get your TV together with the best of live and on demand. Introducing Direct TV Stream with no annual contract. Yes, yeah, so what I'm saying is people like options. I mean, you take Geico, yeah, you can call them anytime if you feel like saving money. It don't matter, day or night. Use your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, whatever. The point is, you have options. Oi, crab cakes. What are you looking at? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Discover card. I just got my cash back match. Is this for real? Yeah. We match all the cash back new card members earn at the end of their first year. Automatically. Woo, I got my money. It's hard to contain yourself, isn't it? Uh-huh. Let it go. Woo. Get a dollar for dollar match at the end of your first year. Only from Discover. focused on my career but when we found out our son had autism his future became my focus lavender baths always calmed him so we turned bath time into a business and built
building it with my son has been my dream job. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. Welcome back. This matchup last year was a route. Clemson taking it 73 to 7. The Georgia Tech players that I spoke to this week said, we remember it and we've talked about it this week. The coaches haven't, but in the locker room we have. We want to remember that taste in our mouth. We remember all the records that got broken against us. We want to remind ourselves that we are a different team than we were last year. That we've gotten better. We've gotten stronger. We have better leadership. And we're going to prove that today. Well, Chris, let's see if they can answer the opening touchdown of Clemson as the Tigers score with the short field, and that's not the way to do it. Now it'll be first and 15. Yeah, but in talking with Five them, the snap, ball start, offense number 79, five-yard penalty, first down. You know, just in relation to what Chris was talking about last year's game, you know, many of them said this is a wake-up call moment last year, that there, there was some stuff within their team that was painful after this game and during this game and that they had to learn from it they did not want to experience that type of kind of feeling again of just getting absolutely humiliated and so um, while it's painful to go through they think it was going to be beneficial in the long run bouncing off tacklers and doing well just to grab a yard was jameer gibbs and you know georgia tech like most teams in college football normally would play with tempo they huddled up on their opening possession. Here they are huddling up again. Why? Well, the last thing you want to do against this Clemson defense is play with tempo. You play into their hands because they can make all their calls so quickly and they have so many intricate moving parts on their defense that you can get got if you're trying to play with tempo. Um, so you're trying to slow the clock down a little bit and be very methodical. You just have to be smart with it because your players will pick up on it. And you don't want to send the message of, we don't think you're good enough. Well, now it's going to be third down and 12 after that Gibbs run. Andrew Booth makes the stop. See, that's a great point. I would think just from a game management standpoint, as sh much of shortening of the game as I can do. Right. Keep the ball away from Clemson. Now keep their offense on the sideline. That would be advantageous. But a player could take it as an insult almost. Yeah, because you don't want a coach saying, oh, we, we could go do it, we could do it. Then why are we doing something totally different? So you just got to be really smart with how you message it to your football team. Now, third down and 12. And this is where Brett Venables loves to bring pressure. Yates, pocket collapses, and he's sacked to end the second consecutive possession. The number one recruit a couple of years ago in all of college football. There's Brian Brzee. That's a great pressure by Clemson. It's really going to be made by 12. Tyler Venables, you're going to get pressure off the left side of your screen. Watch 12 from the right side of your screen. Venables, he drops out underneath the guy that TJ Yates, excuse me, Jordan Yates, wants to throw the football to. So it's all tied together, right? You bring the pressure. Brzee comes off one side, and those zone droppers really got to have eyes on the guys that the quarterback's trying to get the ball to. The Shanahan punt rolls dead after only 32 yards at the Clemson 48-yard line. So the Tigers scored a touchdown beginning at the plus 39. And now they'll start this next possession at midfield. You can't live in this world if you're Georgia Tech. You have no chance if Clemson over and over again is given a short field. Yeah, too good of an offense, too talented of an offense to give the short field to. And I want to see what they want to do on this drive. Last drive, it was this commitment to the run game. Let's see if they try to get some rhythm in their passing game with DJ Uyunglele. Lin J. Dixon right up the middle for four. Lin J. Dixon was headed to Tennessee out of high school because Clemson was recruiting Samir White and White chose Georgia. And that led Dixon to have an open spot here at Clemson. Talk about big shoes to fill. Had a pretty good one here last yeah, year. Not bad. the rock. We'll get another chance here. Try to bounce it outside, and he's forced back. Oh, what great pursuit by the Yellow Jacket defensive front. 
Jalen King eventually made the tackle, but Dixon had nowhere to go. It starts at the middle of the offensive line. Bockhorst just gets pushed back right into Lynn J. Dixon, and then you can get all those bodies as he's got to move lateral running to the football. Now this is, if you're Georgia Tech, you have to get off the field here on third down. Watch the walk around pressure. Communication by the offensive line is paramount here. Know where you're going to, everybody be on the same page. Four-man rush, Uyunglele. A little bit out in front of Joseph Ngata. He had him on a deep square in and missed him. And it will be fourth down. That's a terrific stand by the Georgia Tech defense. One of these moments, DJ, you've got him on the left side of your screen. Just take a little bit off this football. It doesn't have to be thrown so hard there. You know, he's got this big, powerful arm. And I was talking to you, Bob. Sometimes it's like watching a guy swing a driver. You don't have to swing it so hard. You know, 85% is still going to hit it plenty far, but a little bit more control of the football, and I think he's kind of in that world right now. Kyrick McGowan, fair catch at about the 17-yard line. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. Come right back to Death Valley. A new home and new projects go hand in hand. With the Home Depot app, you'll pick it up in no time. You can pick up new skills in our Homeowner 101 workshops. Pick up new power tools with a tap. Pick up the things you need at our convenient lockers. Or even pick them up right from your doorstep. Pick up more of what you need so you can do more of what you love. The Home Depot app. How doers get more done. And Georgia Tech, after that P.J. Harris reception, getting them about four yards to begin this possession. Can they make something offensively of their defense? Just getting a big stop with Clemson taking over at midfield. Yeah, and I think the big thing for Georgia Tech is they got to take and make. You know, you're going to have to take some shots against this Clemson defense, and you got to make them. It's not just about throwing the ball downfield. And at the heart of the Clemson defense goes Jordan Mason. And they push the pile for about three. So third down and three to try and keep this drive alive. And you see the clock just barely ticked behind the play clock. So the they Yellow Jackets, absolutely. They can let the first quarter clock wind all the way down to zero. And after losing 73-7 to seven last year, they go over to their sideline and say we're down by a touchdown, guys, at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, and I think a big thing for Jeff Collins is you got to confirm with the official if you're seeing the clock the right way. Hey, if, if I let this play clock run down, is it going to be kind of matching with the game clock? Well, they're breaking the huddle and coming to the line. Maybe a hard count here to see if they can get Clemson to jump. And they will get a snap off before the end of the quarter. And Jordan Yates on the run, trying to get to the sideline. Sidearms one, and that'll be good for a first down to end the quarter. Terrific improvisational play by Yates to Kyrick McGowan. Although there is a flag down. It's a really good job by Yates. That's the hit early in that first quarter. And they have to check the penalty.